Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Oh. <laughs> that could uh, not have been less smooth. Yes. <laughs> you bumped into the table that five the, times. That's that's perfect. That's really on brand. Hello, folks. Brian tried to <laughs> swirl around in his chair like an evil movie villain. Yeah, it felt like a real Dr. Evil moment. Well, Nate's not here again. <laughs> Laura's not here this time. I got here early last night to grab this chair. You're clearing out all the Bargetsis one by one. <laughs> Brian's really taking over here. He's, uh, we're a right. few weeks away from Brian moving in and just living here, making it his place. He's really taking over here. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, oh, yeah. Brian has his picture of his family in a frame, just making yourself at home. I love it. Yeah. Batesville. Yeah. Well, I don't have any of just me to put on a wall, but here's one of my family. So, <laughs> All right. All right. Today's episode uh, of Nate Land Podcast is always brought to you by Indeed, Helix, Viore Clothing, and HelloFresh. Hello, guys. Hello. All right. Nate is on the road. He will be back next week, so don't worry. Don't right. worry. This is, not, this is not a regular thing. No. No. For, as far as we know, Nate's going to be back for foreseeable future although right. i do enjoy this chair so i don't know it may be a regular thing i mean who knows what's happening i may, may just put nate over here by i may write my name on this one <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see we shall I see i even wore a vest today Felt i got good. a i just got a vest for christmas i haven't Did worn you? it yet but maybe i'll try it once you i've made fun of vests my entire life uh every time i see somebody wearing a vest i've made fun of them but recently i got a vest and it feels good. It's, I always think of that Dimitri Martin joke. What is there a narrow cold front sweeping through the town? You know, it's like a small hug all day. And oh, it feels okay. Good because it's like you, you, your core stays warm, but you're not hot. You know, like the arms are not so. You're not wearing a jacket over this. Hmm. You know. Yeah, I never really understood the purpose of a vest. It feels good. It covers what I think is probably the last part of me to get cold. But I think the core is the most <laughs> important part. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, got, you got a little extra core, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do have yeah, a little extra. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about core guys who wear vests and then have, leave them unzipped? I'm not into that. All right. That's I don't cool, know why. Yeah, you look like a wealthy finance dad. Khaki pants mm. with, with, the, with the black uh, puffy. It's like a little puffy. Yeah. With a little puffy. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, I like that look. Yeah. Oh, you do like that? Oh, I like it. Yeah. There was yeah. a guy at church yesterday. He had a vest on, kind of like yours. It was the more puffy kind, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unzipped. And I'm like, I don't understand what the purpose is. Yeah, that guy's making deals. Yeah. He's making, he want to let you know. He's like, <laughs> I'm open for a deal. <laughs> well, I remember from the first Batman movie, the Christian Bale. <laughs> it's not the first Batman. Well, the first good one. Liam Neeson and Christian oh, Bale right. are the yeah. first one for people under 50. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Bale and Liam Neeson are in the, they're in the cold uh -huh. and Christian Bale's freezing and he's rubbing his arms, right? Trying to get warm. And Liam Neeson says, rub your chest. Your arms will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's backed by any kind of science, but that's how I've been approaching the cold. Ever since. I've never looked into it. I will say if you I were cold chest. and Liam Neeson told me anything, I'd go ahead and do that. <laughs> yeah, <okay>. You think <laughs> you he know knows what what's I mean? up? Or no, I think he'll hurt you oh, if yeah. you don't do it. Mm -hmm. But now anytime I'm cold, I, I remember that line from the movie that I don't know if it's true. I don't want to research it and find out it's not true. You know, Liam Neeson's pushing 70 probably, and he's still – Doing action movies. And when I see that, I think, because I still want to make it, you know, as an actor, I think I could still do action movies if I get with it. Do you want to have yeah. a Liam Neeson type movie career? Yeah. A little Schindler's List type movie to get me really over the hump and then become an action star. I'd like to see um, a version of Taken with you as the lead. <laughs> <laughs> I have a set of skills yeah. that helps no one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get the phone call, you're like, all right, see ya. Sorry to interrupt. Brian, if you could just. Oh, right okay. Now, kind of away from the camera. All right. Talk to all right. <laughs> You're not used to those side. Leave chairs. all this in. <laughs> Leave all this in. I want everyone to know Brian was so excited to have Nate's seat. And we got to reframe the scene four minutes into the podcast. Well, I don't like looking straight on at Aaron. It's I not, don't blame you. It's not appealing. I don't blame you, dude. This is all part of it. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, uh, Brian. That's a good point. That's well, good we. Point. Um, we have not gotten to do a podcast since we did our show together in Kentucky. Yeah, which was a lot of fun. It was a blast. We got a lot of we got a lot of Nate Land people that came out. 
Yep. It was great. People brought us peanut butter. They brought peanut butter. They brought hats. They brought playing cards. They brought beef jerky. Uh, so much stuff. Provisions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had it all. We were able to survive. It was great. We had a great show. We took a lot of pictures with people. Really great. Yeah, Dusty sold like a thousand tickets. Yeah. Man, yeah. it was a sold yeah. out theater. In Lexington, Kentucky. Pretty amazing. Well, I, I, you know, there's some people that came to see you guys. So, you know, I sold some, you sold some. It was well, a lot of fun. We'll see how many of those people come out to see just me in okay. April. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, think, I think you're going to be surprised. And then we went down to Atlanta, me and you, and uh, had another theater show where we sold out. And it was great. Yeah. At Center Stage Theater in Atlanta. We tell you, I, I don't know if you felt this way, Dusty. I felt like that show was much more... Your fans. I mean, they were all your fans in Lexington, but in Atlanta, I, I was getting ready to go on. And I was like, oh, these are Dusty's people out here. Do well, you feel I, that way? Well, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of drunk people like yelling out stuff. Well, that's not uh, what I meant, yeah, but, but yeah, I like, yeah, that's what I meant yeah. for sure. But it was like, uh, yeah, so there was some redneckery going on out there. You know, I've never been so conflicted as somebody who's traveled with Dusty and done, you know, Garbage shows with him all over. Lots of them. Now he's selling out a thousand seats in Atlanta. The crowd is chanting, Dusty Slay, Dusty Slay. It's so cool to hear that, but it's pretty tough when you're about to go up instead of Dusty. <laughs> yeah. Why your own stage are yelling that? Yeah. As the opener, you never want to hear them chanting the headliner's name because, like, y'all are, it's going to be about 30 minutes before y'all get to see the guy you came to see. Uh, Dusty told me they started that chant midway through your act. <laughs> <laughs> Is that accurate? <laughs> you know, I, you know, I talked about Hardy not long ago. And, you know, one time I was in Vegas hosting a music show and yeah. Hardy was on the show. And then after he was done, I had to come back out and the audience started chanting Hardy. <laughs> And I was like, he's not coming back. This is as hardy as it's going to get, okay? But <laughs> lucky for you, that you're pretty hardy. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were so rowdy. It was such a weird show. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, it's a little shot to our pride. Like, I really wanted to think I helped sell out that show in Lexington. And then yeah. the next night, I'm out there and you sell it out. You didn't even <laughs> advertise that when it sold out so fast. Yeah, I mean, well, I used to go to Atlanta all the time, right? And I've not been in a while, so that's well, great. Well, me too, and so, I sold 12 tickets, okay. so. <laughs> well, well, the 12, uh, yeah. Well. No, I sold more than that, but I had a lot of people say, <laughs> thanks for nothing for not coming to Dusty's show, Brian. And I'm like, I was just there last month. And uh -huh. they're like, well, come on. We need a little bit more than <laughs> just you. Yeah, we want to see you, but no, let's not make we, it about you. We want you to be an add-on. <laughs> we don't want you to be the main thing. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, though. Where'd you guys go this weekend? Well, I stayed home. Thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> I always try to take off Super Bowl weekend just to get get up for it. You yeah, know, yeah. Get, my, you did. get my food with the grocery store and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. What about you? I went to Tampa. I went to Side Splitters uh, that I've done a bunch of times, and um, we uh, sold out a bunch of shows. It was great. It was fun. Uh, it was hot. I had a Friday late show that was so good, and then my early show Saturday was like good but the friday late was so good that it was like it felt bad <laughs> where if you I mean? hadn't had the other show you'd have been like that was an awesome show yeah the bar the, was just set way too high it's yeah. like one of those shows where like everything you say is funny and you think oh i wrote 15 new minutes and then you back at a regular show and you're like oh, okay they were just in a vibe <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 they're just rolling with yeah. you yeah and it was really fun though i love it i you know when i'm in florida i, I walk around i walk down the street with my shirt off <laughs> and because uh, I just feel like you can do that sort of stuff in Florida. You know, like I, when I'm walking around, I take the shirt off, get some sun. <laughs> do you really do? Oh, yeah. It's 85 degrees in Florida. Florida's a uh, a shirtless vibe. Well, but where are you walking around? <laughs> to Target. <laughs> <laughs> You put your shirt on right before you walk in? Yeah. I tuck it in my pants while I'm walking, and then when I get to Target, I put my shirt on. Oh, man. Well, but sorry. I'm just out there. Wait, you walked from the hotel to a Target? Yeah. Just shirt off? Side of the highway. Shirt off. Just yeah. cruising. And you don't even stand out, I'm sure. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Florida's a vibe like that. Yeah, you might be the mayor. <laughs> you never know. I like doing shows with you, but not in warm weather yeah. climates. I mean, I love it. I mm. couldn't. I took my vest. I couldn't even wear it in Florida. Hmm. I had a little TSA issue. They were patting me down at the airport. And then oh, I got yeah. in the Uber and I was complaining about it in the Uber. And then the Uber driver started going, well, you know, that's just for your safety. And then I argued oh, with the Uber driver. Man. I've never argued with an Uber driver. And then he kept talking. I go, I'd like to not talk anymore. 
Whoa, and then uh, yeah, we got real heated. And uh, and then I I told him I was going to give him a bad. Re- I said I'd never given anybody a bad review before. And then it got real heated. And then by the end of the ride, I was like, all right, I'm not going to give you a bad review. And then we got out, we gave each other a hug, and then I went to my hotel. Is that true? It is true. <laughs> That's how progress is made, people. That's wow. how you bring the country well, together. I was so mad about what <laughs> you it happened. You hash it out, and then you hug it out. Yeah. I was so mad about what happened at the airport, and then this guy was like, what happened? And I told him, and then he's like... Well, you know, that's just for your safety. And I'm like, oh, oh no, I dude. disagree. Yeah, yeah. And you just, this guy didn't know. You just yeah. wanted to vent to him. Yeah. Yeah. He's I didn't thinking, need any man, of this his... guy's trying to have a conversation. Yeah, I didn't need any of that guy's advice. <laughs> yeah, I used to drive for Uber, and I just agreed with them, whatever they said. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. just to go with it. I'm trying to get a tip here. Yeah, yeah. You well, guys got in a full-fledged fight. Yeah, we almost got, yeah, I mean, it got heated for a minute. <laughs> you grabbing him from the back seat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if that Uber driver decides to stop driving for Uber, you know what he should do? What? He should go to Indeed. Hiring for your business can feel harder than Brian trying to get rid of his squirrels. Look at that. (laughs) But now you can look forward to hiring. Why? Because you should be using Indeed. It is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80... You say data or data? I think I say data. I say data. Data sounds a little pretentious, doesn't it? Data? I don't know. I never thought of it. Data would feel like that to me. Hmm. Oh. Data. data feels a little more like, yeah, I have some numbers, but I'm not going to rub it in your face. To me, data feels laid back. Well, either way, Indeed's U.S. data data shows over <laughs> 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. And you, like we've said before, you do it all in one place with Indeed. You can take the interview. You can do the interviews, take the, you know, communicate with them. You do it all right on Indeed. Indeed knows, finally. When you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Um, Visit Indeed.com slash Nate to start hiring now. Go to Indeed.com slash Nate. Indeed.com slash Nate. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? (laughs) <laughs> okay. You need indeed. <laughs> you, you know, data feels like you know how it's pronounced and you're doing it right. Whereas data feels like you just kind of like huh. like the f- the restaurants that are spelled P-H-O and it seems like it should be pho, but everybody goes pho. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't like, even if pho is correct, I don't like it. Like I'm, I'm going pho. Well, I think the difference there is pho is a, it's another language. Data right. and data is not a language issue. It's just well, a pronunciation. D- data could be a language. <laughs> I did say data just as that. Uh, yeah, you did. You don't even yeah. know to what me, you're data saying. data sounds like you're. It's like saying mature. It's like saying I'm gonna. Say, I know you can pronounce this in a different way. Data just feels more uh, down home. Huh. Now, mature is the word I said that you guys ripped me on. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but you're saying it's okay to say it like that? I'm saying, uh, I mean, technically. Well, technically, it's an acceptable way to say it. I don't think it. I was here when that was happening. No, you weren't. But I, I would have, still make fun of it. But like, mature, mature is the what you, what you said. Yeah, there you go. Oh, boy. Well, All right, let's read some comments about Kentucky. Well, I was oh, also some, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> ask. You were at a place. Yeah, I was in Omaha, Nebraska for the first time. Never been to Nebraska for some reason. I just kind of hopped around that state. But yeah. I, Planted there for a week. I got there a day early because I was going to do Todd and Tyler's Radio Empire, which is a really fun radio show. The number one radio show in the greater Omaha area. Mm. Uh, Big show in Nebraska. It's a big deal. So I got there a day early. I show up 8 a.m. Friday morning. I walk in the booth. Guess who's there? Greg Warren. All right. All right. Greg Warren is in town for a corporate gig. He's a favorite on that radio show. Yeah. So I had Greg there sitting next to me, which is just makes everything more comfortable when you're not going in alone. Yeah. You know, so Greg's there. He's telling stories. He's killing. I'm chiming in. I'm laughing. I'm doing whatever I need to do. And then Greg is like, well, I'm just in town for a corporate. I go, come by and do a spot tonight. Do as much time as you want. Greg shows up. 
Well, you know, it's a nice surprise for the people that know me from the podcast. Of course, they know Greg. Yep. Um, so he goes up there, does a spot, kills, talks about Walgreens or whatever for 15 minutes, whatever. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. It was just a fun, you never expect to see yeah. uh, somebody like that. You know, I wasn't expecting to see a friend at all. Greg was there. So amazing. It's it a really fun weekend. Thank you for everyone that came out. Shows were packed. One show was not, but two were pretty bad. Omaha's great. Nebraska's great. I never done that radio show. Maybe I called in one time, but um I always I I miss it. So I, I I'm look I'm doing it later in June, I think. I'm there. It's a lot of fun. A lot of people come out from that. Like, yeah. It's one of the last few radio shows like that. Yeah. Cuz so many times I've done or not so many times, but I've, the times that I have done press in the back of your mind, you're thinking, this isn't. Nobody's watching yeah. this. Like if you're doing morning TV. It's yeah. like anybody awake to see this will be asleep by the time <laughs> my show starts. Totally. Yeah. And you're doing it for, I mean, best case scenario, I get a funny clip to post myself out of right. this. Right? right. But these are actual people listening, and they love comedy. They have comedians on every week, and they came out to the show just from listening to us on there. So, wow. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you to Colleen and everybody at the Funny Bone. Hope they have me back. I had a blast. Well, I had two questions for you, Dusty, before you get those comments. Or to anyone here. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get your take on. Keep it vague. To yeah. you, Dusty, or anyone. Yeah, the one other guy <laughs> at the table. You, Dusty, or uh, uh, Super Bowl. Thoughts on the Super Bowl? Well, you know what? This is what happened. I went to a party. My yeah. neighbor had a party, and yep. it's like everybody wants to have a Super Bowl party to watch the game, and then you go, and then nobody watches because you just talk to each other. But I do think there was a bad pass interference call yep. mm-hmm. late in the game that like shifted well. the entire way that went, and I'm like, that's my theory. I never felt like the NFL was scripted, but I do feel like the officials can sway the outcome of the game. I feel like they can sway it, but I feel like it's because of human error because they, they're not. I don't give them that. There's too many replays. You think they things. know what they're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's such a – that was not an egregious penalty. Mm-hmm. If you if you accept the premise that that was pass interference, it's not an egregious mm-hmm. example of it. Mm-hmm. So why call that when you haven't called that the whole game? Mm-hmm. You call that at such a pivotal moment mm-hmm. in the game. It was just such a bummer for me because it had been such a great yep. game. Yep. And then, golly, it comes down to that. It was like somebody punctured a balloon yep. for me. I was so right. so annoyed. I was like, this is all, you know, it's all a wash. I mean, I've had that even when when a team and we because I wanted the Eagles to win, but even when my team is it, it goes in their favor, I still hate it because I'm like, it felt like we didn't win the right way. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I got did you watch did you watch the commercials? I mean, it's been if you're lit, we were we're recording this the day after the Super Bowl. Yeah. So it's on our mind. By Wednesday, everyone will have forgotten about it, I'm sure. But yeah. um I got so annoyed watching the commercials because I feel like literally every commercial is just they just throw a celebrity in. I saw your tweet. I was furious about it. I don't dude. get that though. What do you want? Just some random dude? I want a you commercial want me on there. No, well, yeah, an actor. I want like an actual commercial. Why well, I'm an actor? I was in Sprung two episodes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, more than me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I like the John Travolta one where he was singing with the Scrubs guys. I'm a big. I was a big. <laughs> Greek. Oh my god! Are you serious? <laughs> I did like. I like John Travolta. I like seeing him. I like Grease, so I like that one too. Yeah, I mean, you want a bunch it's of no Greek. names doing the same commercial? No, I mean that was maybe the worst example of what I'm talking about. And you were a fan of that. <laughs> well, com- listen, it's like if Grease were like a movie that had just come out not long ago or something, and I, I would think that it was ruining Grease. Yeah, but it's such an old movie now, and John Travolta is probably like, yeah, re- revive me a little bit, so maybe people remember who I am. Tell me more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you liked it because it, it represented a resurgence in John Travolta's career. I like John Travolta. Okay. I liked it because I was there opening night when Grease came out. <laughs> <laughs> nostalgia. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia there for me. But I don't remember it ever being as bad as it was this year, yeah. where literally every commercial is just a nothing commercial, but oh my God, it's a celebrity, so it's supposed to be interesting. Mm-hmm. I went to my neighbor. I sat on her back porch and had a cigar and watched most of it through the window. Okay. That's how I like to party. 
Well, I'm surprised. I'm a little disappointed. Neither of y'all are on board with how upset. Well, I, I didn't got see a lot of the commercials. So, what do you want? You just want like uh, I don't know, Viola Davis selling you Sprint. Mm-hmm. I'd buy Sprint from Viola Davis. I mean, it, I, I well, it, creativity a, is dead, and one hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. It's like why even create an interesting commercial that's funny, well written. Just throw Miles Teller in, and then now you got a commercial. Keep in mind when I came up we watched the bud bowl with intensity i mean it was there was no halftime rihanna it was the bud do you remember bud bowl Mm -mm. bud bowl i feel like i've heard of that See, i'm too old for you guys even bud bowl was where pre-super bowl (laughs) it was like at halftime (laughs) people would watch this budweiser bottle versus bud light bottle and they played a real football game and we took it as like legit like this is gonna be a tight one sometimes people talk about that more than the game so my level of uh, entertainment is a little bit different maybe than yours. Oftentimes, the Super Bowl is the least entertaining game for me. I thought that was a close game last night. It was good. I liked it. But no. I just felt like all along they wanted Mahomes to win this. That's probably true. I mean, the Mahomes I, is yeah. the future and, you know. But I, I guess what annoyed me is that this the Super Bowl, I was this year I was – more than ever annoyed by what felt like Hollywood coming in and taking over football. Celebrities everywhere. I mean, we got to do nine different songs before the the coin toss. It's just so much nonsense. Mm -hmm. And then every commercial is just another celebrity. And it's just like, I don't care about celebrities. It it, it started to annoy me that they were every. There was a Pringles commercial where halfway through I was like, all right, thank God. This is not just a celebrity-driven commercial. And then it just Megan Trainer just shows up, in it, and I was just like, I mean, what are we doing out here? I, you don't even want to eat Pringles anymore. Well, I don't even go that far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still going to enjoy some Pringles, but no, I, I get what you're saying though. It seems like where they could just have a creative, well-written, fun commercial. They're just like throwing in celebrities to to make up for lack of creativity. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's all it is. Just entertain me, but, don't try yeah. to wow me. But to me it's representative of of what I think Hollywood thinks of America. Just like throw I don't care. I guess a lot of people do. I just don't They're care like, about celebrities. Here's some chips, here's some hot wings, here's some celebrities. And, and here's we'll- a person that's better than you. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're better than you in every way. Just look at them. That's why I'm okay with the John Travolta one. Because okay. he is better than us. <laughs> Dusty's a Scientologist now. You know, well, I got you'll like this, Dusty. Did you see the commercial of it was it was a Coors guy and a and a Miller Light guy arguing? And like this is a Coors commercial. This is a Miller commercial. And they fight. And then at the end it goes, actually, this is a blue moon commercial. And everyone's like, Well, that's really creative. Well, you know, it came out that all three of those brands are owned by the same company. Wow. You know, Coors, Coors probably owns them all, huh? Um, yeah. Well, it's, uh can't remember the name of it, but it has a parent company that owns all three. Wow. That was pretty smart, but. Nobody's fighting at a blue moon party, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? I will say that. <laughs> you got your oranges in there. You got a little fruit in the drink, fighting. I don't think so. <laughs> Nobody's fighting at a party with garnishes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, you make some valid points. I was thinking about some of the previous great Super Bowl commercials, the 1984, um, mm-hmm. that one, the uh, oh. the the frogs, the Budweiser, Budweiser frogs, stuff like yeah. that, the white hat, all that. <laughs> but at least this year, I feel like maybe <laughs> that was very good. Yeah, thank you. I feel like last year, maybe it was the year before, there was a two three years there where they were getting sad, like it was all trying to send a message, and there was some type of, of course. Thing. I don't really feel like that was this year. Well, now they're just shoving Hollywood down our throat. I'd rather that it was. Than- it was like if if I hadn't have noticed it, then I it, it ruined it for me. As soon as I was like, "There's a celebrity in every commercial," and then every commercial is just Bob Bob Jack Harlow. I mean, what are I don't even barely know these people. But as someone who's on their way up and about to be on these commercials, I support it. So you don't even recognize half of them are celebrities. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Jack Harlow was. I guess I saw him. I didn't know who that was. I just know the halftime show, I was looking for a special guest to come popping out. I wanted to see a, a special, you know, uh-huh. I like a I like a halftime show where you're like, you don't know what's about to happen. Well, and she's sudden, got a special boom, guest. She she's got a special guest. Yeah, she's pregnant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she even said, she was like, I might bring somebody with me. Oh, that was uh, pretty nice. Oh, that's the guest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very creative. I'm happy she's pregnant. I like it. All right. The other thing I want to ask, uh, 
and this one really is more directed toward you, Dusty, is the uh, of the uh, spy balloon and the objects they're shooting down. Oh, well, people are all talking about that now. I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. I mean, I don't think it's aliens. And uh, I can't imagine. I mean, if if they they are real spy balloons, that does not say a lot for our military intelligence right now. I mean, I feel like we're supposed to have like the best to be able to get rid of these things before they go float. We're using balloons now. And they're <laughs> and they're like, well, I heard they've been, people said, oh, I heard they've been getting through our intelligence. And I'm like, well, that's what I'm talking about. That would be a concern. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I said on Twitter that it's all the uh, happy birth, all the balloons I let loose in the nineties <laughs> where I wrote my address on it, hoping someone would find it and write me a letter. <laughs> they're finally finding them. <laughs> now how many times did you do that several <laughs> we thought that You're was looking a, for a friend you know, we'd there. get balloons with helium in it and we thought this would be a fun thing you know kind of write the address in in a little note and then send it up yeah. and then if yeah, this yeah. balloon comes down somewhere and they find it they could write you a letter and say hey i found your balloon in so and so state oh, that's nice. but of course my address was lot eight moore's trailer park so people are probably like, i don't want to give this guy my address <laughs> it's probably drugs in this balloon <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 now, I read a conspiracy theory that they're just, it's just all a big distraction because of something else either they're about to do. Or, well, it usually you know, is. Yeah. You, you know, don't know what it is? I don't know what it is. Well, I have some ideas. We don't have to get into it on the podcast. Just tell me afterwards? Yeah. All right. You guys want to read these comments? Yes. Sure. All right. Kentucky comments. This is from Christina Marshall. There is zero chance that Aaron would have worn those sunglasses for more than 30 seconds if Nate were present. While the cats away, the mice wear sunglasses indoors. Oh, uh, yeah. I never would have brought them inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sure. is true. We all knew that. Yeah. yeah. We were all a little looser. Yeah. yeah. What's that hat you got? This is uh, the Omaha Storm Chasers, where I was this weekend. This is the, uh, the Arunza. You know what a runza is? It seems not. like some kind of Italian, uh, uh, I would think, like a calzone. It is. It's kind of like a calzone. I don't think it's Italian. I think it's a roll a roll with ground beef, onions, and cabbage in it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's like a little meat pocket. I've had cabbage rolls with beef and rice inside and wrapped in cabbage. Very good. Oh. In, a, in a tomato base. But this sounds great, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all about Try it. Try it next time you know, you're in Omaha. Omaha was where they invented the Reuben sandwich. Really? That's what they told me in Omaha. And yeah. I had one there. Delicious. Hmm. Oh, I'd rather have a Reuben on this hat than a Runza. But that's the like the like their official hat? It's like their alternate. All the minor league teams do an alternate uh, uniform with a, a food. A Runza sounds okay. like something you get after you've eaten something bad. <laughs> <laughs> Got the runzas. Yeah. The Italian guy with diarrhea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> got, got the runzas. All right. Joe Tech. This episode was proof point for the Ewing theory. Aaron can look that up real quick. Uh, I don't think I need to look that up. Patrick Ewing for the New York Knicks was widely considered the best player on their team. You know, he's one of the greatest players of all time, but he was considered the best player on the Knicks. Mm -hmm. And, um, for some unexplained reason, when he was out, the team seemed to play better without him. Wow. So I think it's a description of that phenomenon. When your best player is gone, the team will somehow perform better without them. Because they know they have to step it up. Because they're all motivated to uh, pick up the slack. I see. Mm. I was a big Patrick Ewing fan. I liked him. Yeah? Yeah. I think I had a poster. Might not have been mine. Could have been my stepbrothers. <laughs> but it was in the room. All right. You remember looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Abby Rose Esposito. Very few things make me laugh harder than breakfast's golf swing with the delayed foot lift. Also cracked up every time he blamed Laura for not letting him be Nate. I used to, and he did it again today. Uh, I used to listen to intellectual podcast to learn something, but my life has legitimately improved since listening to this podcast and getting a good giggle throughout the week. Thanks, boys. That's nice. Yeah, that's because people that think they're intellectuals are telling you nothing. They're always telling you nothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's all, like on these pot, they're like, look, then they use these big words and try to explain these things. And it's like, you, you're not talking about anything. Uh -huh. I don't mean you. You're, okay. you're our intellectual here that does tell us things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You knew what the Ewing theory was. I, I was not even sure if I would be able to pronounce the name. I feel like I came in too hot with all the celebrity stuff. I'm, I'm, I apologize for that. 
set the tone bad for the podcast. I feel great. I just got fired up. No, you were representing Nate. Nate's going to 100% agree with you on that. I was tapping into Nate's energy a little bit yeah. for that. Yeah. Let's go back to me. Wait a minute. You were a Patrick Ewing fan, but you were afraid you wouldn't know how to say his name? Well, yeah, I didn't say Patrick Ewing, right? I know oh. how to say the name. But a, I, yeah, it's an E-wing. You know, yeah. out of context, it's <laughs> yeah. an odd All looking right. word. Yeah. All right. All right. Joanna Zimmerman. Dusty being anti, anti-microwave, but cooking himself in a tanning <laughs> bed is peak <laughs> Nate Land podcast. We're having a good time. I mean, I agree what you're saying, but a microwave is not a bunch of halogen bulbs that take, you know, 20 minutes to cook. A microwave, I, when I was a kid, I put bugs in the microwave, and uh, oh. <laughs> it kills them fast. Yeah, uh, I imagine it does. Right? Uh-huh. I've been in a tanning bed for 20 minutes before, and not, all I got was a good tan. Okay. I came out of there looking good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Unlike the bugs. Yeah. Unlike the bugs. I mean, that kills them quick. What would you put in the microwave? I mean, you don't have you to know, get into beetles, it Beetles, grasshoppers, okay. stuff. I grew up in the country, and, and I was bored. I, you know, this, you're doing science. Yeah. That's all you're doing. There was no internet <laughs> back then. I was not trying to be like evil and kill the bugs, but I was like, what would happen if I put something alive in the microwave? And now mm-hmm. you know not to put you know a human being in there. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There you go. And I also... You know, it's like, it's weird when you you put something in the microwave and somehow like the middle is hot, but the outside's cold. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't like that kind of, I don't know what's going on in there and I don't like it. Mm. Okay. That's what happened to me at the airport. I, the body scanner, that thing that goes around you, I don't like that. I don't know what that is. So when they randomly select me, I ask for the pat down. You know, uh-huh. but I'm polite about it. But they really treat you like you've, you know, just robbed the place uh-huh. if you want a pat down. And then because, you took it out on your Uber driver. Yeah, because I one time I, I was like, I don't know what was happening, but I got randomly selected. So I just did the body scanner. And then I did the body scanner and they still made me take off my shoes and pat me down. So I'm mm. like, just go ahead and pat me down. Yeah. I don't mind if you're, you know, yeah. touching on me. Well, the TSA is such a well-oiled machine. I mean, yeah. anything messing it up. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, man, we can't have that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Kaba 1996. Brian asked Dusty what made a certain county in Kentucky the most dangerous place in the country, and, and Dusty responds, all the murders. <laughs> <laughs> Brian reminds me so much of my best friend. Level-headed, reasonable, but sometimes ask dumb questions. That's the reason I listen. I was physically slapping my steering wheel with laughter. Well, I guess I should have worded it differently. I guess I, what I was trying to get at is why, of all places, would it be Harlan County, Kentucky? Like, you think Chicago or yeah. You know, what is it about that place is what I was trying I to ask. I think sometimes it's population, right? Chicago is such a huge population, even though they have so much crime, it mm-hmm. doesn't it balances out. Whereas Harlan, wise, Kentucky yeah. might be a tiny town where everybody's killing each other. <laughs> yeah. So you were asking what are the socioeconomic conditions <laughs> such that <laughs> there are so many okay. I was asking, you know, like what 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 leads to that place being so dangerous? Okay. And I think you followed up with moonshining. Yes. So there you go. That's what I was trying to get at. Mm-hmm. All right, Kevin Kearns, the reason you can bounce a laser off the... Oh, here we go. The <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> the reason you can bounce a laser off the moon is because if you believe it, it is said they placed a mirror at specific coordinates, and the reason it works is because the moon is tidally locked with the Earth. The moon doesn't spin. Every time you see the moon, you're looking at the same face, as you were the night before. So the mirror is up there. Uh, the mirror up there is always in the same spot. I mean, yeah. I mean, I hear you. I mean, it's like, I knew about the mirror, but um, yeah, I mean, the I don't believe the moon stuff. But you would at least agree that the moon doesn't spin? Well, I know it doesn't spin. I mean, I've seen that same face my entire life, <laughs> but I was told that it spins. And that, you know, there's something going on. Somehow it's it's up there and uh-huh. it's, you know. I, I do find it hard to believe that it's it spins around the earth. It rotates. But yeah. somehow is locked. That one side of a circular object is locked so much that you never even see a teensy-weensy little bit of another side. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's tidally locked. Tidally locked, but you know, nothing. There's no other evidence of something tidally locked, so that we can compare and go, "Oh, actually, that uh, that is what that is." There's no other thing where we go, well, "What's another yeah. example of something that's tidally yeah, locked?" None of our other moons are tidally locked, <laughs> right? Nothing know? else. There's no other tidally locked thing, so yeah. we just go, "Well, I guess I, I guess I believe it because it's tidally blocked." And even still, I mean, I, I just I don't know. I can't. I can't buy into it because if you're, what, what are you seeing? Like, let's say the, the earth spins, the moon's tidally locked. So where we're at, we see the same face of the moon. But what if you're on the other side of earth? Mm -hmm. uh, what are you seeing over there? It's just that same side of the moon just rotates. I don't know. I'm not buying it. One of Pluto's moons is tidally locked. Now, if, well, you're right, right. But, but Pluto way away. Sometimes they don't even a planet, and and they're like, well, they go, well, what's another example? Oh, the farthest planet away. <laughs> like if I if I could shine a laser on the moon and it hit me in the face, I'd be like, okay, okay, you got me. <laughs> like if I were like, whoa, 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 what is that? Now, then that I saw um, a shooting star the other night. And I wanted to ask you, what do you think that's all about? I don't know. I mean, they tell us that a star has burned out somewhere in the universe and we're seeing that, or it's a meteor yeah. or something like burning that. Up, it's a meteor atmosphere. burning up in the atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think it's just, you know, it's a little show up there. You know, <laughs> God's given us a little show up there. Well, I agree. The you show. Know? Yeah. Well, those two things aren't mutually that's exclusive. Right. Yeah, that's right. Know? God's given us a little show. He's like, hey, appreciate you looking up here for a change instead of looking down at your phone. I'm going to give you a little something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, hey, speaking of the sun, yeah. uh, thanks to all our friends at Helix Sleep for sponsoring this episode. I feel like the sun is like helio, the heliocentric. So uh, Helix, Helio. You could go, when the sun goes down, what are you going to sleep That's on? good. All right, yeah. here we go. When the sun goes down, where are you going to sleep? But yeah. thanks to our friends at Helix Sleep for sponsoring this episode. I got a Helix mattress, and it's great. It is I got. Good. Listen, I've, I've always been a fan of a different type of mattress brand. I, I've, I've owned a couple of those mattresses, and I got this Helix mattress, and I got to tell you, I I mean, it is really good. I mean, I, I want to say it's better. I, other than I had to spend so much money on all these other mattresses, it, 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 it hurts me to say it's better, yeah. but it is better. Uh -huh. And the pillows, there's also another brand of pillow that I've been a big fan of, but the Helix pillow is... Literally the best pillow I've ever owned. It's awesome. I sleep on it so great, but also when my little daughter were playing, I throw her on the bed on top of those mattresses. She just on top of those pillows, she yeah. just sinks right in. She loves it. It's amazing. That's and Hel Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models a mattress for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. So how will you know which Helix mattress works best for you? Take the Helix sleep quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. Helix mattresses are shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix, Helix knows that there's no wet, better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. And that is true. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10 to 15 year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. Also, made in America. Oh, that's good. Big time. I took the Helix sleep quiz and I watched with the Dusk Lux mattress. I matched, not watched. You got to flip that W upside down. <laughs> I was matched with a Dusk Lux mattress because I wanted something that felt medium firm. Uh -huh. Helix supports military, first responders, teachers, and students by giving them a special discount on site. Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Nate. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long with Helix. Better sleep starts now. Mm. Mm. Well done. You guys have some pillows, right? Oh, I got we do. The they are good got pillows. pillows they and, are. and the mattress. Oh, you got the mattress too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, they're great. It's amazing stuff. I got the uh, I got the, the plus size mattress. All right. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, yeah, you, what put does that it, mean? you put in your weight, and at a certain weight, they're like, "All right, we're gonna need a little extra, little extra oomph." Oh yeah. In that mattress, so yeah, I think it's called like an XL or something. Okay. 
I it, recommend it. Now, right. what when when you were sleeping on a regular spring mattress or whatever you had before, and now you have this plus size, what's the difference you feel? Well, I think this is not even about the ad. I'm curious. Yeah, well, I think if if there's too much give on the mattress, then basically the mattress is. It, it, if I'm on one side of it, it ends up being just a forty. And then Lucy degree, just rolls over rolls over, over yeah. into me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's like we're sleeping on the side of a hill. <laughs> yeah. You know? There was a comic at Zany's recently had a very funny joke about camping. And, and uh, they said, I don't know anything about air mattresses. I know one thing. If you're the heavier person in the two, mm-hmm. the other person, they get the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's oh, for yeah. sure. That's for sure. That is true. Yeah. yeah. You know, I had my sister sleeping, her and her uh, boyfriend at the time, sleeping at my house on an air mattress when they got engaged mm. and then later didn't invite me to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you'd have given them a real mattress. That's true. That is Should have got her a Helix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is right. Yeah, buy your family a Helix and they'll invite you to the wedding. <laughs> All right. Here's, Should be their tagline. That's one of the lesser known perks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here is reality show comments. I wasn't on this one. I guess this was with John Reed. This is John Reed. Okay. Yep. You know John. I know John. I actually was really bummed I missed that one. I like John a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did not know that stuff about Lavelle Crawford and like him being on at the same time as him and then oh, the yeah. reading off the winner and yeah. being like disappointed as John. Yeah. Uh, do you know Greg Warren was on that same season? Oh, yeah? Yeah, we talked about it a little bit this oh, week. It's a hot season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is Tad Cooper. When I saw the episode was about reality TV, I scoffed at the idea of someone watching a bunch of people doing nothing uh, of consequence once a week. Then I remembered I religiously watch a two-hour podcast hosted by guys talking about how they don't really know that much, giving out basic facts they often disagree with, and talking about how space might not be there. Well, it's not. I guess (laughs) we're all just trying to justify... Uh, uh, no, I, <laughs> whoa, whoa. I, I put just trying together, justify. I added a, a F in there. I got fired up. So talking about space. Yeah. I guess we're all just trying to have a good time. Thanks, guys. We are just trying to have a good time. Yeah, Ted. Don't get so, uh, you know, people love space. I mean, they just love it. They yeah. just uh, hope to go there one day. Mm-hmm. And we have a vast Earth here. I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a kid. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah for I sure. Did too. Went to space camp in fourth grade. Got indoctrinated young. Oh yeah. You know? No, I still, you. I still would love to be a, an astronaut. You know. Some people will point out that the word now, not how it's spelled, but how it's kind of pronounced, like astronaut. <laughs> right? They're not really going to <laughs> astro. <laughs> Spell different. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, a Russian astronaut is called a Cosmo not. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's all. Yeah. They ain't going nowhere. <laughs> well, I, I don't know that I'm going to make the cut, but Aaron, you might be young enough to be able to go someday. I think in my lifetime, by the time I die, they're still going to only bring people up there who have something to contribute. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to bring tag alongs by the time I die. You might have to be really rich. Or super wealthy. Right. Yeah, you have, I think what you have to do to go to space, you have to be really rich, and they know that you won't tell that space isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> they have to, you, you get enough money that you're in the club, and then they're like, go up there, and then you get up there, and they go, hey. Yeah. It's not real, guys, but we know you won't tell. Yeah. So not is a suffix indicating a person engaged in the navigation of a vehicle. Mm. This is also heard a lot in uh, – yeah, like nautical, yeah, nautical sailors. Oh, yeah. Nautical miles. Yeah. Cosmo not. Yeah. So I like it. I mean, I'm into it. I'm just, you know, I'm yeah. just, we're having a good time. <laughs> you know, the Red Hot Chili Pepper said space, it may be the final print frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. I mean, you know the song. You probably sang along to it. Space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. Oh, okay. I don't Californication. Know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you oh, I didn't sang, know. That. Probably sang along to it. I probably did. Yeah. 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 Those guys get it. Yeah. All right. Scuba Steve Bryce Phillips. What a fun episode. My family watched the original reality show, Bill Dance Outdoors, every Saturday when I was a kid. I was wondering what show the guys watched with their parents when they were young. (laughs) Well, we're all 10 years apart, so. Yeah. Probably all have different shows. I'd say so. Big Bill Dance fan, by the way. I didn't watch his show a lot, but I've gotten uh, 
gotten into him late. I like what he represents. Yeah. You know? I like that Tennessee trucker hat he has in that black and white photo you Old have pulled school. up there. It's yeah. down a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great hat. And when he got famous and he got a lot more money, he didn't get a new hat. He yeah. just kept that same Tennessee He looks Tennessee the same hat. ever since I can remember. Uh-huh. And he was, it was he, he's a, I went to the Bass Pro Shop Museum, Springfield, Missouri. They have a oh, lot yeah. of Bill Dance stuff there. Oh, yeah. I've been there. You know, I didn't see, you know, Tom Mann. When I was growing up, they, he seemed to be uh, a bit of a big deal. He was make he made a fishing lure that was pretty famous, um, and um, his brother Billy Man lived next door to my dad. Really? Did yeah. you ever meet Tom? Never met Tom. I think Bill Dance is the only fisherman I could have named. Yeah, but Tom Man's another big one, apparently. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> That's true. Um, Maybe the biggest of all. Well, Jesus was a carpenter. It was his followers that were fishermen. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. But he, I mean, you can't argue that if he's like, if Jesus is like, hey, go down there, there's going to be a fish down there with a coin in its mouth. That's a pretty big deal. He could have crushed it in fishing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you're saying he couldn't have been a fisherman, yeah. dude? He would have been the best, dude. He's sending other people. He would have given Bill Dance a run for his money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Katrina Lewis. Uh, it was surprising to hear Aaron dismiss the challenges priests faced in coming up with material for their homilies. A priest friend of ours has shared that. In fact, priests are constantly scrambling for material, trying to make the scheduled reading relevant for parishioners. Wow, this is a tough read. They theorize <laughs> it would be easier if they could choose the scripture themselves, like the Protestant counterparts. Parts. Yeah, they might theorize that, but I think they're wrong. I think it. I think it. Um, I think it being so open ended is probably more challenging than they realize. What's a homily like a poem? A homily is the sermon during a Catholic mass, and it is if it's longer than ten minutes, people start to be like, "Oh God, wrap oh. it up." How long is like a whole service? Hour. If the priest is good, forty-five minutes. No. So if he's <laughs> ten minutes, then what's the other fifty? Other stuff is happening. You're reading a lot of things. You got to kneel a bunch. That was my point. Is that the sermon is such a small part of the mass, uh -huh. just time wise. I'm not. I'm not going to argue it's important. Uh -huh. I. I mean, personally, I think it's probably the least important part of the mass. Mm -hmm. But time wise, it's a fraction of it. Yeah. So it's like, who cares? You know. Mm -hmm. If the priest did a, a 90 second homily, everyone would be thrilled. Get you out know, of there let's quicker. move it on. Let's yeah. move on to the next part. Do you, you know? prefer the priest singing Latin? I like a Latin mass. It's fun. I've been to a Latin mass. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know really what was going on, but I did enjoy it. Well, that's the nice part about it. You don't really need to know what's yeah. going on. You know, you're just part of it. Yeah, it was fun. I would go if I slept in through when I was living with my parents. If I slept in too late, they would make me go to the Spanish mass oh, yeah. at 5 p.m. where everything was in Spanish. And I didn't have it. It was all the same stuff happening. But I didn't, you know, you could tune out a little bit. Yeah. Felt good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's tough to pay attention for 10 minutes, you know? It's like. Well, the mass is. It. I mean, See, I don't understand I, why y'all enjoy a Latin mass or Spanish mass if you don't understand what's going on. See, when well, I go to, when it's I go one to of the church, nice things when, you're, when your religion's been around longer than 30 years. You can do stuff like have a Latin <laughs> <laughs> when, <laughs> when I go to a church, I like the preaching. I could do less singing. I'm like, let's get in there and hear the well, preaching. Well, to hear that, Dusty, because I feel like that would be what you, you wouldn't agree with anything they said. No, but um, <laughs> but I like hearing them, you know, get into it, break it down. Oh, you know? uh, okay. I'm not interested in anyone breaking anything down. I, I love it. I love the, the uh, you know, con, you know kind of like hearing the point of view and touching oh. on verses and bringing them up. I like to follow along in my own King James version oh. and then make notes about mm -hmm. how I don't, I think if they had used King James and they would have gotten a different interpretation Ooh. here. Mm -hmm. I'm an NIV guy myself. I used to write, I used to write the preacher's emails later. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dusty's been banned from numerous churches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Sean. Oh, fun disagreements <laughs> between friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good time. Sean Tobin. It's too bad Dusty wasn't there to tell his last comic standing story. I heard him mention it on his podcast. It ended with a nice story about Norm McDonald. Maybe he can tell it when he gets back. Uh, well, it, we going <laughs> no, no, it's on my YouTube. Uh, it is a long story. I got like a 20 minute story on my last comic standing experience, uh, which was not as successful as John Reeves. Yeah. I made it to the final 100 
and then I was out. Then you have you can tell this part a party where people were watching and then you weren't you got cut out of the episode. Well, yeah, I mean the they told me now I don't have this written down anywhere, so yeah. I don't. But they told me everybody is going to get some TV time, right? So, so we're all and 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 they make you promote it, yeah, right. So I had to share it on my Facebook. And then a girl I went to high school with kind of picked it up and shared it like, hey, our friend is going to be on Last Comic Standing. And I thought, well, I know I didn't win, but I will at least show up. And you're not allowed to tell anybody that you've already been eliminated, Right. right? So, you know, I'm watching with my roommates at home, but I had five roommates at the time. And we're all watching, and and then I'm just, you know, the internet uh, people I went to high school with are watching. So I'm like... Uh, just hoping that I get some little clip. And I hope that I get the point where I talk to Norm MacDonald because mm-hmm. I, I got to talk to all the judges. And then I talked to Norm MacDonald and he said, you know, uh, he said, you know, material comes and goes, but you have a great voice. And I think you have what it takes to be a great comic. It's awesome. And it was such a great thing. I'm like, hopefully they at least show that. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Show me get eliminated, but show Norm MacDonald saying that. Yeah. And of course they never did. Wow. So- but that, you know, Norm McDonald wasn't always nice to people on that show. Yes. So that's pretty cool that he gave you such a good compliment. Mm-hmm. And then I later I shared the video and then I tagged Norm McDonald in it. Just he was still alive at the time. I tagged him and uh, <laughs> it helps. Yes. And he responded. He said, I remember you. I don't have the tweet exactly, but he's like, I remember you from that show and I've been following your career since. It was a joke about fishing, I believe. I did several fish jokes. Yep. And we had watched the TV show uh, How I Met Your Mother with a room. I'd watched one episode and a guy tried stand up comedy and he did jokes about fish and was bombing real bad. And my roommate said to me when we were about to watch it, I said, Well, I didn't advance. And he goes, Well, at least you won't be telling jokes about fish. <laughs> <laughs> and I did do three minutes of fish jokes. <laughs> Look, well, I have the tweet right here. Norm McDonald says, Hey, Dusty, I remember you well and have followed your career since last comic standing. I told everyone those fist jokes. One thing about failure, it makes for the best stories. If you only have three minutes, it makes complete sense for, to use them all on one subject. Peace. You're having a great time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool, man. That would be like my sc- screen, <laughs> like my save screenshot. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you know, I did share it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I. I I didn't want to do it when he was alive because I felt like it, it felt too like fanboyish to be like, look what Norman Donald said, yeah. you know. And then after he died, then I felt like You're I'm like, like yes! then I felt like I'm like chasing this dead man's clout. Mm. You know what I mean? So you got enough time now. You yeah, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized we never answered really answered Scuba Steve's question about what shows we watched as a kid. Oh. Uh, for me, Dukes of Hazard was very big. I was a big Dukes of Hazard guy. Which you're too young for that, but you would have watched it. it. I watched a lot of reruns of Dukes of Hazzard. Well, I think the question is what shows we watch with our families or our parents. Oh, well, Dukes of Hazzard. Dukes of Hazzard is a big, big (laughs) family show. It's a Friday night. Andy Griffith. I mean, my dad loves Andy Griffith. So we watched so much of that growing up. Mm -hmm. My dad loves old westerns, Gunsmoke, Mm -hmm. Bonanza. Bonanza. Love Bonanza. I've seen I've seen so many episodes of these shows. Columbo was a big one that we used to watch. Matlock, you ever get into that? I see a little Matlock. He wasn't so into that, but I've seen some Matlock. Mm-hmm. I'd like to get into it. It's fun. Yeah, I mean Andy Griffith uh, or Andy. Yeah, Andy Griffith's a great. Uh, I mean, he's just a good character. Mm-hmm. I like a courtroom show too. Yeah, I like courtroom drama. Matlock was big in our family. We watch Andy Griffith's show as a family all the time. The black and white episodes, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trash when it got color. In yeah. My yeah. opinion. Uh, Law and Order. We were into all the Law and Orders as yeah. a family. We would say the guy from Criminal Intent, we'd always say, looks like my dad. Okay. So we'd watch that and make fun of him. Okay. Uh, that show's still on, isn't it? The criminal Intent might or, still or be. Or Law and Order. Yeah, they're still making some iteration of it. It's incredible. Yeah, it's been around forever, man. The Simpsons came out my senior year in high school. Wow. And it's still on. And you were talking about Last Comic Standing, how everyone was going to be on. It might remind me, I... Uh, did you guys have video yearbooks? No, in high school, Mm-mm. video yearbooks. Yeah, no, that was a th- maybe it didn't last. But m- while I was in high school, they're like, we're going to do a video yearbook, and this company came in to shoot it, and they said, if you buy one, everybody, everybody in the school is going to be in this video yearbook, so you'll be in there. And then, like the last day they're there shooting, 
anybody they hadn't shot yet. They're like, everybody come to the gym. And they just had us walk through a line and wave at the camera and then just keep walking. And that's the way they got everybody in the uh, video yearbook. Yeah. You pay like $50 or whatever to see yourself wave for five seconds. Do you have that somewhere? I do. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. on VHS. And, if, okay, you're, and if, you're the, it if you're the waving guy, it doesn't really feel like you were really part of it, even though you're in the video, right? Well, everyone was just waving. Yeah. What else are you going to do? But there's someone behind the camera going, come on, come on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, well, they were just hurting us like cattle. Like, come on. Yeah. Just, we got to do it. The yearbook was such a big deal to look through and see if you got pictures in there. I always would get a little something in there, but uh, but it was never great. What was your quote, senior year? They didn't do quotes for really? us. Really? We didn't do quotes. Probably a good thing. It would be something that I'm embarrassed of, I'm yeah. sure. But uh-huh. we didn't do quotes. And I, I always wanted to. I thought I thought that'd be great. There weren't a lot of quotes around yet when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I think, therefore, you I am. You didn't take history in, class, in <laughs> yeah. high school either. It was limited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was very easy. Current events. Yeah, current events. All, All right, right, we got two more here. Cat Cook. I'm an architect for a popular home remodeling show, and it's infuriating. Mm, trading spaces? They don't like people to know that architects are involved, so they have someone else take all of the credit. It led to their own home and gardens in line in Walmart, uh, line at Walmart. At Walmart. It led to their own home. home and gardens line at Walmart. Yeah. Thank like you. a line of products. Yeah. yeah, thank yeah. You. <laughs> Thanks for coming in there. <laughs> own home. It's hard to say. It's tough back to back. Own home. It's like a tongue twister. Was this Dr. Seuss? <laughs> just always remember. He they're... doesn't do tongue twisters. Does he? <laughs> yeah, he does. It just rhymes a little bit. No, no. I've been I've been reading them to the baby. Oh, okay. And they are like. Still tripping you up? Yeah. <laughs> you think it'd be a tongue twister if you're not a good reader. That's so. true. Uh, always, Just always remember, there is so much more going on behind all of these shows. And a lot of times the person on screen actually has absolutely nothing to do with the design, build, permits, or even meeting with the client. Well, I believe it. Yeah, that didn't yeah. surprise me, though. Mike K. But thank you for sending that in, though. Yeah, I nice. do. Uh, yeah, I mean. I would, I'd like to know what show she works because on. Because I watch Restaurant Impossible a lot, and I like that show a lot. Actually, matter of fact, Robert Irvine just. I saw that. Yes, he's he's yeah. tweeting at you. Yeah. Yeah, it was really great. But I like the show. But it's like, they're all, it's, they always act like they're like, we got two days to do this build. And it's like, don't. Tell me that you're so stressed for time. I know you can just do as much time as you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's, it, there's got to be some stakes to it, you know? She gave you some hints too, Aaron. Home and garden line at Walmart. You could probably figure it out. I could, but I don't want to reveal. If she clearly didn't want to tell yeah. us. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I was watching a Restaurant Impossible, and they were just doing a remodel. And then all of a sudden, there's Pat Sajak. <laughs> Just remodeling. I don't know. Robert Irvine said they featured him on the episode, but I don't remember them seeing him even talk about Pat Sajak. He just popped up all of a sudden. Robert Irvine says, Dusty, we did introduce Pat Sajak in the show. LOL. He's a look at Robert Irvine saying LOL. Yeah, yeah no. I don't know why that means. There's got to be a Robert Irvine team. <laughs> it might be him, yeah, dude. You know, be. it's probably not. But he's a great friend of the show and our whole team. Also, Mark Summers. Now, I see Mark Summers always credited in there, but uh, I don't know this show. It's great. You know, restaurants are failing and they're about to lose their business and they call Robert Irvine in and he comes in and he embarrasses them and trashes them and tells them their food sucks and that their restaurant looks bad. And then he (laughs) fixes it up, shows them how to cook, changes their life, Uh and it's a lot of fun. And then six months later, the restaurant's out (laughs) Out of of business business. again. (laughs) Yeah, because they're like, he goes in and he's like, how much money do you owe on the place? They're like, I don't know, (laughs) $500,000. He's like, how much are you making each month? Nothing. We're losing money. Yeah, losing money every month. And he's like, oh, gosh. But one of the things I, I remember in that show is almost every time he's like, your menu's too big, right? Oh, Isn't yeah. that a big yes. theme in the show? Yeah. It's like, rather than have a million things you're okay at, pick nine or 10 things that you're great mm. at. And now every restaurant I go to, I look at the menu and I judge them based on how big the menu is. <laughs> Cheesecake yeah. Factory. I mean, yeah, it, Cheesecake Factory is insane. Yeah, it's a Well, you know, I used to work at Hyman's in Charleston, and that was always my complaint for them, right? Hyman's had a, a lot of food they did really well, but they had this gigantic menu with just everything you could. And it's like the kitchen would get so overwhelmed at times because there's like – so many different, like the crispy flounder they're displaying there is amazing. But, and, and, you know, they might have dwindled it down. I mean, this is years ago when I worked there over 10, almost 10 years, but 
Uh, it used to be, I mean, it was a huge three pager that you're flipping through. And I'm like, let's narrow it down here. They don't need all these options. Mm -hmm. Cause people come in there and they go, uh, what do you like better? The Amberjack or the tilapia? And I'm like, oh, the Amberjack is really good. And they go, okay, I'll have the shrimp, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're just judging you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and a bet going. And last one, Mike K. How do you not talk about Theo Vaughn and Christina P on real world? Hmm. I don't know. How, how did we not talk about road that? rules too? I don't. I didn't watch those. I knew Theo was on a reality show. I couldn't even tell you why. Yeah, I thought they were on Road Rules, not Real World. Maybe I both. never watched either of those shows. I have no idea. I don't watch any reality shows. Uh, the only one I kind of watch. I mean, if you count that, is Hard Knocks. The, oh yeah. And I just watched a thirty for thirty called "The Bullies of Baltimore." And it's about the 2000 Baltimore Ravens. And it's very hard to watch as a Tennessee Titans fan because they were our nemesis. And mm -hmm. They put us out when we were the best. But they had so many characters that the next year, they were the first hard knocks because they had so many just crazy characters. Oh, hard knocks. I thought you were talking about the show where kids go into prisons and they yell at oh, them. Oh, scared straight. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> not too far off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it comes later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, they had Ray Lewis and Shannon Sharp. Suggs. Uh, Terrell Suggs. Yeah, he wasn't like a – he wasn't on that team. He wasn't a vocal, but like a Tony Suragusa was a big character. Mm -hmm. Ed Reed. Yeah, he was on that team. Yeah, he was on some of those Ravens teams. Like, he he wasn't as uh, highlighted as much as far as – but Brian Billick, they were very arrogant, very cocky. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know. And it, good. Very good, yeah. 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 But they kind of started the – that part of the reality shows. I watched the reality show a little bit with, with villain vanilla ice and Vern who played many me and Vern uh, Troyer? it was a, um, this is where they, uh, hang out with Amish people. I don't know. It just seemed like a real ridiculous. <laughs> what are you talking about? I just think reality shows are so ridiculous. They just bring out the worst in people. They are ridiculous. But vanilla ice did have, it's called vanilla ice goes Amish. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying it wasn't that. But it had a bunch of like almost like that. This is uh, it's still on the air. This is unbelievable. I mean, I would do uh, a reality show with the Amish, though. I do love the Amish, but uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. But they would probably want you to make fun of them or something. Yeah, and I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Well, they also Amish people uh, don't want to be on camera, right? So it's going to be tough. I don't know how they do that show because they don't like being photographed or filmed. Yeah, I think they say something like they feel like it takes their soul. A photo. Maybe. It's all. It's just that's a, Native Americans. Okay. <laughs> well, it's the same. Right? Yeah. I think They're living a similar lifestyle. I think. Just it's a, a vanity off, thing too. Off the grid kind of thing. Yeah. I think it's a vanity thing as well. Oh, okay. Where it's yeah to, to be photographed, immortalized in that way. You know, I went to an Amish uh, community one time, and they had a store, and the bathroom was an outhouse, and I went out there to use, and I was using the outhouse, and you know, I was standing. And um, and I thought that I locked the door, like I I moved the lock to the lock place, but I guess it did not latch around the thing. And then someone came and opened the door, and then mm -hmm. ran away real fast. <laughs> and I thought it was my buddy who just opened and saw I was in there. And then he goes, "Oh, he goes, he goes, I bet you just traumatized that Amish lady." She was like, "He's like this Amish lady opened the door and then like closed it real fast and took off running." Uh. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, well. Uh, should be all right. Yeah. She's got bigger problems. Well, you've talked about there's different levels of Amish. I mean, That's true. There's not, they're not all living the exact same way. We saw a guy in the hotel lobby. You saw him. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Googling girls. <laughs> he was, he uh, was no. in the hotel. It was in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. He just had girls typed in on Google. <laughs> You got to start broad. And then yeah, right yeah, down. You, know, yeah. you don't know how to Google stuff. <laughs> it's not a bad place to start, I guess. <laughs> oh, man, that's wild. So he's like, finally, a computer. <laughs> yes. Let me see what I can find. He's not even being dirty about it. He's no. like, I'd just like to see some women. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It starts <laughs> off simple. And yeah, then it yeah. Quickly. All right, guys. This week, I thought, you know what? Valentine's Day is only 364 days away. Yeah. Let's talk about Valentine's. No, all right. So this comes out Wednesday. We're recording this on Monday. So tomorrow night's Valentine's. Mm -hmm. Dusty, how are you going to be celebrating Valentine's? Well, I, you know, of course, I you know, I don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Oh, okay. But I don't believe in it. And um, you don't think it exists? 
Well, I mean, it exists, <laughs> but I think it, yeah, I mean, it dates way back. It's got some weird stuff and who knows what anything is really derived from, but it's got some weird stuff and, uh, you know, a lot of pagan origins, uh, like the, 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 the God Pan, who's like got goat legs and a human body and plays the flute. Um, mm-hmm. that's Pan flute. Yeah. Is yeah. that where that comes from? Yeah. Oh, I didn't huh. know that. I didn't know that either. I think there is some like Peter Pan origins in there too from, from Pan and, so I don't like it. I'm not into it. Mm-hmm. I don't really celebrate any of the holidays. Yeah, I was about to ask you, is there any uh, Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I like Thanksgiving okay. <laughs> but I don't can't find any pagan origins to Thanksgiving. But like Father's Day or Mother's Day. Uh, you know, I'll call my mom and dad, but I don't, you know, only because they're like, they act like it's a big deal. But I'm like, I'm calling you anyway. Yeah. You don't really need me to do this. But I'll do it. Yeah, because those aren't pagan. I don't buy cards right. for them, though. I don't support the this this idea that they just go, hey, this is a holiday, so on this day, you got to make sure you got to buy a card. Yeah. You got to buy, like Valentine's Day, they're like, hey, be sure to buy flowers today that will be double the price if you buy them tomorrow and make a reservation at a restaurant that will be real crowded right. when you could just come here, you know tomorrow and it'd be a pleasant experience and know? dusty i mean uh is hannah on board with this hannah made a joke today which maybe wasn't a full-on joke but she <laughs> says you know i just keep holding out hope that one day my husband's just gonna buy me some chocolates on valentine's day and i said well you can give up that hope <laughs> <laughs> i said i'll buy you chocolates any day of the year let's yeah. not do it this yeah. day just not that day yeah but it's got to be tough to be left out when everybody else is getting chocolates and roses you know what i mean yeah but you know we're we're She's yeah, look, you're you're you know look, you're a good husband, I'm sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. good She's father awesome. to your to your daughter. But. Yeah, I know you are. Yeah, I know. But and also but, Valentine's Day is this weird kind of thing. Like when you're single, it makes you feel lonely. Like if you're single and like look, if you're single and you're like I'm fine, then you don't care. But if you're single and you like want to be dating someone, Valentine's Day is like a sad day. Okay. Yeah, I read somewhere that. Who knows this is true? Because I feel like they put this for everything. Suicides go up. Yeah. <laughs> around Valentine's. I feel like every holiday they say that, though. Yeah, I've heard that about Christmas and yep. Thanksgiving and everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's any day where other people are happy and you're not. Right. I bet that that is difficult. Yep. You know? Yeah, I mean, Christmas can be like that for people. If they don't have families, it can be very sad. Mm-hmm. Um, but I tried to watch. I used to be really into the details of what, what was all going on with the Valentine's Day paganism, but... I feel like we don't need to. Well, I got I some details to, I want to share. Okay, yeah, I didn't need to bring everybody down. No, that's okay. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. I have. If you want to do it, do I it. was. You're not wrong. Yeah, exactly. Participate exactly. in commercialism all you want. I <laughs> have. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, this is a Catholic feast day. This is what I was told. Okay. The Saint Valentine. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a real person mm-hmm. in in Italy, in I don't know two or three hundred A.D. And he would, uh, Christians weren't allowed to get married. He would marry people in secret. And that's how Valentine got associated with okay. sort of uh, love and dating and wooing and courting people. All right. And he would uh, there's, he would give them uh, a heart cut out of, uh, I can't, parchment or fabric or something. And that's how the heart became associated with so okay. that's that's not a. Uh, I've heard different paganism, things about the heart but, that is not even appropriate to share on the podcast. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, okay. But I, I I like that. You know, if people were getting married on Valentine's Day, I'd be like, all right, let's do it. But I feel like it's really turned to a weird kind of date. I th- I mean, based on our research, you're both right. But will you and Lucy do anything for Valentine's? Uh, we have dinner reservations. Yeah. for Valentine's Day night. Yeah, yeah. Outside of that, nothing really. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. My no, you seem I disappointed. You. No, no, I mean, that's no, the no, thing. You get some flowers, you go to dinner. That's yeah, what people yeah. do. That's uh-huh. what That's what we, I don't know. I didn't mean it like I just cut you, you off. You said it like, man, wow, that's all? No, that's no, no. I, I didn't mean like. it like that. That's. I think that's great. My- when, when I was younger and trying to like scheme to get dates rather than just be <laughs> honest and confident in myself right. and just ask her out on a date, I would always think that Valentine's Day would be a good day to like ask a woman out on a date. Yeah, she's and it desperate. was. It was always a. It never seemed to work out. But I always felt like, yeah, you know, I was always like this. Yeah, yeah, she's desperate. She'll be lonely today. I don't know that I was <laughs> she's thinking about those to kill things, herself. but maybe subconsciously I was thinking that. But. Um, <laughs> You know, it just seems like um, uh, 
uh, you know, it would be just a good, you know, but you know, it's easier to date people if you just, um, are honest, are honest and, and, and you actually care about them. And mm-hmm. it took me a long time to learn that. Yeah. Well, it took yeah. me a while. Not as long as me. Not but as long as you. I, my, our first, uh, Valentine's Ruth and I, I sent her flowers to her work and I waited all day to get a call, a text from her, something like, Oh my gosh, you're the best. Thank you so much. All that. And I never heard anything. So then we had plans that night to go out for dinner. So I was like, all right, I guess she's just going to tell me in person, (laughs) whatever. We go out to dinner that night and she never says a word. And now I'm like, what is the deal? So finally, at the end of the night, I just have to ask her. I'm like, look, did you by chance get something sent to you today at at work? Like, I guess I said flowers or whatever. Uh And she was like, no. No, I didn't. And so then I tell her, well, I sent you flowers. I don't know what happened. And so the next day I call the florist. And I, I'm like, I don't know if I'd believe you. If you were her? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get that. That's fair. Uh-huh. But she did. And I did send flowers. And I called the next day and I said, she never got the flowers. And, and they were like, yeah, we had a lot of people call out sick, delivery drivers or whatever. And we just didn't get to all of them. And they said, we'll just, we're, we're going to do it today. And she, they said, we'll just take it off your bill. Hmm. And I was like, oh. You're like, all right, $75 back in my account here. It was over hmm. 100 And I'm yeah, like, uh, for free on February 15th, sign me up every year for that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so it was the best Valentine's I ever had. Wow. Well, that's what I'm saying. They just manipulate you, right? It's yeah. like they, they know that it's now an established holiday. And yeah. if you don't buy your, your significant other a gift, then they're going to be mad at you. So they're jacking up the price. Now, I get it. If you own a flower shop, you're like, this is our time. Oh, yeah. We're going to make that money. This is like firework stands on July 4th. Yeah. Yes. Like, make that money. Yeah. But. Make that fudge. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's a lot better than the rest of the year, which is funerals. So. Yes. Yeah. And they also take advantage of you. That is too. true. Yeah. That is They're true. like, oh, your loved one died. You're grieving. Oh, buy these flowers for $500. <laughs> I don't even know. That could be low. I lowballed on the on the uh, no. Valentine's I think that's Day. a little that's a little high. Okay. I mean, I don't. It depends on what you get, I guess. But anyway, all right. So, how Valentine's started? You are correct. There's two. There's two theories. Mm-hmm. Two. Uh, there might have been two different guys named Valentine, or it could have been the same person. But one of them was well. Yes. I'll just say this though. In in my th- some some of the research that I've done, they do incorporate those two things that this was already a thing. Yeah, I'm about and to then, get to that. Okay. All right. Okay. You're right too. Okay. So the story is the emperor of, of Rome didn't want his soldiers to get married because he felt like it distracted them from being at their top physical fighting or whatever. I don't know. Just okay. they need to focus. So this guy Valentine would secretly marry soldiers. Um, and then they found out about it and they executed him. So that's kind of what you're saying. He was a martyr. He was right. a martyr. Then yeah. there was another Valentine story that um, <sighs> the heart probably came from the shape of an arrowhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he was killed with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was another Valentine. He was helping Christians escape Roman prisons, and then they caught him and they beat him and tortured him. And then he fell in love with the jailer's daughter, who would visit him while he was in jail. And before his death, he wrote her a letter signed from your Valentine. Wow. And then that's how, how about that? About. That sounds like a country song. Yeah. yeah. Now your part comes in, Dusty, because uh there was a, a pagan celebration called Lupercalia. Um, and it was very pagan. And then after a while, like I think a lot of these religious uh holidays, they did combine them. Yes. The, the Pope was like Look, let's just take ours and put it on the same day as theirs and then hope to kind of overtake it. I think Halloween's that way. Um, we've talked about some other ones. Well, Christmas mm-hmm. used to be Saturnalia. Mm-hmm. It was the big celebration they used to do. Mm-hmm. So it was a pagan celebration called Winter Lup- Solstice. And in, during Lupercalia, it was a fertility festival dedicated to Faunus, the Roman god of agriculture. And it was a three-day feast, and they would sacrifice a goat and a dog – and then they would whip women with the hides of the animals they just killed. And young women would line Seems up- Seems like a good day geez. to buy some flowers for. Jeez. <laughs> young women would line up for men to hit them with, with this because they believed it would make them fertile. Yeah. There's some deeper, darker stuff in there too. But I don't- I mean, there is. Uh, well, this is dark enough for, yeah. for this I, one, I, I guess. Yeah, not, that's why I'm not- Because I, once I started researching it again, I was like, actually, I don't even want to- 
<laughs> yeah, I don't even want to. I don't want people to even have to listen to it. Yeah, yeah. it's there pretty was, dark. There stuff. was another theory that birds. I don't know how people know this. They mate on February fourteenth, <laughs> or around that time. Okay, so that's how they made Valentine's. Why they made Valentine's? Why they maybe why they gave Cupid wings? Maybe so. Yeah. What What's Cupid all about? Too is that Valentine's kid? No, he was a Roman god. He was much more sinister, I think, than what we think of now. I don't know if sinister is the right word, but he wasn't like cute and chubby. In the Bible, Nimrod is mentioned, and Nimrod is a uh, a warrior with and a king with a bow. And some people think it's derived from Nimrod. And is he a bad guy? In yeah, the, he uh, built the Tower of Babel. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. He's the grandson of Noah, maybe great grandson. Mm-hmm. Of the cursed son. Nimrod, great insult, by the way. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say, don't we call people Nimrods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nimrod, nincompoop. So he led the construction of the power. Yeah, power he was battle. the king, yeah. Okay. Because there was a lot of people building it. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't, he probably was not even lifting a rock. Yeah, yeah, he was just overseeing it. Yeah. He's the contractor. Um, You think he wore one of those helmets on site? <laughs> yeah, probably so, a hard hat. Yeah, hard hat, yeah. 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 yeah, he was carrying around a clipboard. Uh, Valentine started becoming more of a romantic uh, thing in the Middle Ages. Geoffrey Chaucer, English poet, wrote a Valentine's poem in 1375. And, um, and then the Duke of Orleans, 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 uh, he wrote a, a poem to his wife while he was, a letter while he was in jail. I think we talked about this during the Middle Ages episode. And then it just be, kind of become more and more over the years a romantic thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, it did not start off that way. It, it kind of. Yeah. See, that's, yeah, they get a little softer. Yeah. But then it, it probably, it probably takes a turn at some point. Like Halloween, I felt like when I was a kid, Halloween was pretty innocent. Mm-hmm. And now it's like real devilly. It's like gotten, I mean, like adult, like people my age, like we were like really doing the trick or treating and now we're like grown and we take Halloween like way too serious now. Mm-hmm. It's like. It's a big business now, for sure. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, it's just money, making money. Now, I've seen pictures of Halloween, the turn of the century, like early 1900s, and those kids' costumes were scary. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they were like homemade, of course, and so they would just go go dark. Um, I mean, those are pretty scary. <laughs> Maybe not that one, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but, one's, that one's tough. Yeah, they're talking about like that. Yeah, the little kids with weird, scary masks on yeah. and yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, um, but I mean, I know your theory on Halloween, and, and I I get it. I you know I dress my daughter up as a bunny. I don't think she's doing anything satanic. Well, she's not, not yet. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> That's how it starts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how it starts. Um, and then chocolates. Became a thing. Richard Cadbury. Cadbury chocolate. Oh, yeah. Cadbury egg. Yeah. He- uh, he got a real, he's, a real, he's a real hit on uh, Easter, too. Yep, that's true. The old Cadbury bunny. That's true. He uh, started selling heart-shaped candy boxes in 1861. Okay. And he realized that people would keep these boxes. He could promote it like, hey, even when you're done with the candy, use the box to put your- uh, possessions in your jewelry, your loved yeah, ones, and that became smart. a so. When we trip. rob you, we'll know where it's at. <laughs> 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 I like that. The guy's like, "Listen, I'm going to give you this box, and then when you're done with it, put your jewelry in it. Yeah, yeah. Put all your valuable. Keep it by the door. <laughs> Send me your address. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you guys exchange Valentine's cards as kids? I meant to bring you guys one today, but at school. Yeah, at school you did. I had a box that uh, I would like. Stuff them all in. I did like wrapped it up. And I love Valentine's as a kid, collecting Valentine's cards. Yeah, yeah it's fun. It's yeah. fun giving them to. We had a, we had a school. We had, you had to give one to everybody in the class. Oh, that would have been nice for me. It wasn't <laughs> like uh, just the ones people you like, or yeah. you know. I wish keep, I went to your school. <laughs> keep everybody involved. <laughs> well, yeah. by the time he was in school, like think they had they had gone through that where they're like, some of these kids are not getting bound. <laughs> That's one hundred percent what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, these that kid got nothing. <laughs> Guys, you know what I wish I had for Valentine's? Viore. Viore clothing. <laughs> Viore's very nice. Ooh, Wasn't that a great a segue? Weak segue. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. let me tell you what. I'm wearing Viore right now. V for Val- V for Viore and Valentine's. Oh, that would have been better. That yeah. would have been better. Yeah, V-Day. V-Day, yep. I'm, all right, I blew that Viore one. Day. Viore asked, we asked, who do you want to wear your products? And they said, Brian has the best physique <laughs> of the guys there. Mm. So they I have agree. Me, they have me wearing this. This is Viore. 
Uh, the t-shirt underneath Viore. I look great, right? You do. Viore is really, actually, matter of fact, there was a guy at my show the other night and I go, I like this shirt, man. What's this shirt? He goes, Viore. And I was like, oh, they're a sponsor. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. sure are. <laughs> should, should be the other way around. People should be coming up to you like, hey, Viore. But yeah. Uh, either well, way, it's, it's a great product. I got product. the gym shorts, which that's what I wore when I was walking through Florida with my shirt off. Yeah. Yeah. They're comfortable. It's a pair they? of Viore shorts. Well, we all love Viore. We've gotten a few things for them. Performance jogger, the core shorts, I think that's what you got. Yeah. It's a new outlook on performance apparel. Perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional old workout gear, which we all are. Viore can be, right? I'm working out all the time. Yeah. I wear these things out. <laughs> yeah. Now I can uh, use it for running, training, yoga. Also great for lounging or weekend errands. I do all of it. It's comfortable. You want to wear it. The website's easy to order from. It's not cluttered or busy. Seriously, order something today. Viore's 100% offset their carbon footprint. They're also reducing offsetting 100% of their plastic f- footprint from 2019 and beyond. How about mm, that? Mm, mm, Their mm. investment in your happiness. We're talking about Valentine's. We're talking about people getting depressed, love. Viore, that's what you should love, guys. <laughs> you know what Viore's <laughs> not going to do? They're not going to jack up their price just for Valentine's Day. Same price all year round. I hope that's true. <laughs> we have no idea. They if that's... probably have sales and stuff. <laughs> <throughout> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they don't go up because it's Valentine's okay, Day. Let's yep. just stick with that. Okay. All right. All right. I hope they don't. For our listeners, there's an <laughs> offering 20% off your first purchase, Dusty. It's not all the same. 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viori.com slash Nate. Oh, yeah, Nate. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash Nate. I forgot about him. forgot about him. How's not, he doing? Not only will you see, he's killing it out there for sure. He'll be back next week. He's going to have a lot of fun stories. 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to Viore dot com slash Nate and discover the versatility, 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 fertility, fertility, fertility versatility of Viore clothing. All right. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of fun. All right. So um, was dating – do you have any Valentine's story from like when you were in high school or – Well, I don't I don't know that I have a lot of Valentine stuff. I mean, I got dating stuff because yeah. I, you know, for a long time – I mean, I lived in, you know, a, a relatively small town. Yeah. And it's like you just kind of date people that you went to high school with, that you just knew. There was never this like having to like – meet someone that you didn't know because I kind of knew everyone in the town because I went to school with them. Right. So, right. And I, I worked with it. I have very embarrassing things. I used to like to make CDs. Mixtapes. Yeah. yeah. I made a, I worked with this girl at Western Sizzlin and I really liked her and I rather, and I look back on it and I think, you know, had I just asked her out on a date, had yeah. I just been a man about it and been like, hey, I'd like to take you on a date, right. then I would have got a clear yes or no, and then I at least would know. But I think if I had done it, she would have just gone out with me. Mm-hmm. But instead, I would do all these things to try to make it seem like, you know, like just try to get her, like I made her a, I don't even want to say it, but I made a mixtape with a, a song on it. I heard this song. I don't even want to, but I, I talked Only about God it. God Knows Why by no. Kid Rock. Oh, yeah, man. tell us who the artist is and we'll guess. It's so bad. Uh, well, if I told you the, if you knew the song and I told you the artist, you would know. I think it was their Meat only Loaf? song. It was Mr. Big, I think. Mr. Uh, Jones? No, no. The artist was like Mr. Big or Big. This, the song is called, uh, yeah, look it up, see what it says. Mr. Big, American Band. Alive and kicking to be with you. Yes, to be with you. And it is, well, it really conveyed what I wanted to say, yeah. honestly. But mm-hmm. I could have just not been, it's just like, it's cheesy though. Mm. So we never went out on a date. Mm-hmm. And I can understand why. Mm-hmm. She probably put that CD in her car on the way home and ejected it within 15 seconds and threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Like if you want to be like, you have to hear the song. Have you heard the song? I have not heard the song. I don't oh, know if we can gosh. play it. No, nah, probably. But we not. can pull up the lyrics. Yeah, pull up the lyrics. Sure. It would be best if we if we did. But it's it's one of my most like it's one of those memories that I can think about and then retroactively be embarrassed. Oh gosh, oh, yeah. yeah, I have plenty of those. Mm. Let me look these up. I'm okay. So you would burn a uh, CD? Yeah. I mean, I had to. I did that a few times. I did never work cassette tape where I would listen to the radio and be ready. Oh yeah, <laughs> let's play and record, and then have to stop it before the DJ talked over. Oh, yeah. the song. 
it took a long time for me to gain personal confidence. Like I always was confident enough like mm. to make people laugh. I had lots of friends. Most people would probably not think that I was a lower confidence person, but mm -hmm. personal, like one-on-one -on -one think like, like I could make women laugh like nothing. Right. But then the moment I thought the girl that I liked, liked me, mm -hmm. then I was like, Oh no, there's a new level. Like we could be laughing Mm -hmm. ah, and then somebody goes, she likes you. And then it would just shut down. I'm yeah. like, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. now there's a pressure. Sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't feel that pressure at all. I mean, does that translate to anything now with your career? I don't think so. I mean, you know, once in a while, but I, I just feel like right now where I'm at, I'm like getting everything that I want, like mm -hmm. comedy wise, that any other things are bonuses, right? Like I don't, it's like any kind of TV stuff that might come along is a bonus. But all I've ever wanted was just to do comedy for a living and, uh, you know, and sell out the shows. So now the sellouts are finally happening. So I'm like, I'm in the perfect place. Right. This is where I want to be. If some TV thing comes along, great, I'm all for it. But I don't feel the pressure. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I think when I'm on stage, I'm still more confident when I, than when I get off stage. Yes. Sometimes. And it had to be girls. Just hopefully it's not girls since I'm married, but yeah. guys or anything, you know, just talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Well, I, I had a, I worked with this guy. I used to work with this guy and I wanted to talk about him anyway because he, he kind of taught me how to date, right? When I was 21, I moved to Charleston and I had just come out of a trailer park. I was living in a trailer for a few years and then I moved to this really nice city of Charleston and I'm drinking a lot and I'm selling, I'm the assistant pesticide salesman with this guy who was in his late 60s. He used to play football for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, you've talked about uh, him. And he's just like, you know, this well, you know, it's huge guy. Looks a little bit like Billy Graham, a little bit like Christopher Walken, slick back, white hair, big glasses, big chin. And he used to, um, you know, he would give me all this advice. And when I would talk to him about kind of, you know, finding it more difficult to, ha to have one-on-one -on -one conversations than to talk to a bunch of people. And mm -hmm. he said, you know, that's because you get to go into this like character almost, like where you're entertaining people mm -hmm. as opposed to actually having to have one-on-one -on -one conversations, which I do still think is more difficult. One-on-one -on -one is harder than to uh, just talk to 10 people. Oh, yeah. That's because you're just talking to people That's right. versus talking with. That's yes. right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yes. There's reciprocity. Yes. You know? I mean, even like if I'm hanging out with somebody and we're talking, even if it's a good friend and then other people show up, it can change. The whole way that I'm talking can change because it's like I shift into entertainment mode. Would you rather be in a long car ride with one person you didn't know or two people you didn't know? One person. Yeah. I think I'd rather be with two. So would I, so they could talk to each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. I'll switch. <laughs> Two people I didn't know, and I'm in the backseat. Oh, no, they're in the back, and I'm driving. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> Have yeah. them talk. What is reciprocity? Well, like, I might have misused the word. I've, I've been thinking about it ever since I said it. <laughs> this but is like, your- it's, it's reciprocal. Like, okay. they're, they're going to have to reciprocate. Like, when you say something, they say something back. Yeah. It's not just you talk, you know. Yeah. Do you wait, wait to talk, or do you listen? Oh, I, I try to be conscious about- listening to what they say yeah, um, and not just jumping in with yeah. what I'm saying. I find it hard to uh, wait and talk uh, <laughs> because, or, or you know what I mean? Because we're like, we're comics, right? So our, uh, we do podcasts where we talk about ourselves. Yeah. We uh, do comedy where we talk about ourselves. We're narcissists. Like we are, uh, and I'm spending time thinking about how I can talk about myself. Yep. And it's not, I don't think it's so much a narcissist thing, uh, narcissistic thing, as it is like, this is what I'm talking about on stage. It's not that I just want to talk about myself, but it's always the safe thing. Mm -hmm. I can tell my own stories mm -hmm. and no one's ever offended because it's my story, right? So if, if if you spend all this time mining your own memories and thinking about these things and it, that when you're actually now talking, you're like, oh, uh, I, so what I always try to do is find some relatable story that I have. <laughs> Because I don't know, sometimes I, I, I think, I don't even know how to talk to people that aren't comics. You're talking to Dusty, he's just thinking, all right, how can I make this about me? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I don't even mean to do it. How but can I, I tie this into Dusty Slay? Yeah. But I am aware that it happens. Right. Yeah. You know? Well, I looked up some 
great stalker stories. You guys remember? <laughs> Think about say love stories in your diary. <laughs> well, <we're- laughs> oh, boom, boom! That was a good all one. Right. All right. Uh, well, I have some of those in my journal, yeah. but no, I left those. So I, these are all women pursuing men because I feel like when it's a man stalking a woman, it gets much more uh-huh. sinister. It's, uh-huh. Somehow, it's a little bit lighter when it's the woman. Chasing the man. Do you guys remember the the astronaut who drove from Texas with to, a diaper? Yeah, I read on Wikipedia that that's maybe not true. That was just oh, uh, that was the hook of that story. That was the hook. You remember the story, Dusty? Yeah, I think she discovered that space wasn't real, and then she's like, <laughs> "I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I'm driving to Florida." Yeah. Astronaut. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, for just to refresh everyone's memory, she was married, but I guess her marriage was going nowhere was about to end Mm -hmm. she was seeing another guy was an astronaut then he started seeing this woman who i guess she was a pilot maybe and um she drove to florida to confront her and supposedly wore astronaut diapers um sounds more fun to say that right Mm -hmm. so she didn't even have to stop driving and she had a lot of but she needed to stop for gas right yeah that's a good point why not just Use the bathroom when you're stopping for gas. Put jet fuel in the car. She want to go in the house. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, going into the the convenience store. Was she on the run from somebody at the time? No, I don't think so. Why was she in such a hurry? I thought she was on the run from police. I don't think so. I think um, she just once she made up her mind, she wanted to get to it, and she knew that when this woman's flight was coming in, so maybe she wanted to get there. Oh, uh, meet her at the airport. Yeah, by by then. Lisa Nowak. Lisa Nowak. And she, so she. Confronted, I'd say there's a little bit of whack in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she confronted this woman in the in the. Lisa, some whack. Yeah, yeah. yeah very whack. <laughs> yeah, she confronted her in the parking lot of at the airport, and I guess once the woman saw who she was, she did roll down her win- window, and then she sprayed her with pepper spray. Wow! And uh, the Lisa sprayed her with pepper spray. <laughs> yeah, Lisa sprayed oh, okay. sprayed this uh, the victim with. Pepper spray. They found uh, in her car uh, latex gloves, a black wig, a BB gun, and ammunition. <laughs> and pepper spray. And ammunition. So yeah. BBs. <laughs> I guess. A hooded tan <laughs> trench coat, a drilling hammer, um, an eight-inch Gerber folding knife. I don't know what all she had planned, but she drove 900 miles to confront this woman. Wow. I like Lisa. Yeah. Seems like a, a motivated lady. Mm-hmm. Like when she's got something on her mind, she's going to get it done. She might be one that would spill the beans on this whole space yeah. thing. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Lisa Nowak was like, I've discovered things. Oh, they pinned this on her, maybe. Yeah, and they were like, she's trying to run. And they're like, oh, she's got a she got a crush. Yeah. So all this is just made up. Yeah. There was, um, there was a woman, this is another country, she called uh, a guy 65,000 times in one year. Lisa did? No, this is I'm moving okay. on now. This is okay. different. This is a different lady. Sixty five thousand times. And that comes down to two hundred calls a day, and assuming she's awake sixteen hours a day, eleven calls an hour, or one every five minutes. This guy should have thought about blocking her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At a certain point, it's on him. You know, <laughs> this might have been before that. It might have been his home phone for all I know. Oh man, there you go and unplug that. Be like, if you want to get in touch with me, you write me a letter. <laughs> And then another woman, this is Arizona, she texted a guy 65,000 times. Same same number, 65,000 texts to a guy she met online. She told him he, he was her soulmate. And then uh, she lived in Phoenix, and she mis- visited the guy's home and office and flooded him with threatening text messages. And uh, sometimes 500 texts in a single day. You know, they always told you growing up, if you want to be persistent, yeah. You know, be persistent. Don't take no for an They say women like persistence. And clearly this woman does like that. <laughs> she just is doing it. She's the one doing it. Well, they asked her about it, and she said, love's not perfect. That was her answer. So Yeah, or good at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder what the guy had to say, though. I don't know a lot of well, statements from The him. worst moment was he was out of the country, and I guess he had a home surveillance video, and he could see that she was in his house. So they called police and uh, went to the house, and she was taking a bath um, in his bathtub, and she had a butcher knife in, in her car. So could have been a little fatal attraction thing going on here. Jeez. Dang. It's intense. Yeah, or maybe she was cutting up fruit, you know? I mean, 
She's like, well, this knife looks looks suspicious, but I, you know, I like lemons in my water. Uh, maybe. Like an orange in my blue moon. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Blame the blue moon. (laughs) So we're three confident guys here. Can talk about our, uh, you know, our romantic side. What's a good romantic, uh, what's a song, Dusty, that you always go to 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 really feel Well, I'm really the worst about that, though, because I like songs like Mm -hmm. that, but I'm like, I think Al Green has got some of the best. Uh, There's a song called How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? Uh, and then uh, that's, oh, yeah, a, that that's a good one. And I think he has another one called If I Give My Love to You. And that may not be the name of the song, but uh, that's how it starts. Uh, great. I mean, Al Green is really crushing it in that area. I've but got, yeah. I, I like if you're looking for like a little sadder element of this. Oh, you ever yeah. heard this? You, you ever listen to Bread? Bread's amazing. Uh, no. Oh, the band Bread? I'm, I'm familiar with them. Okay. But- they have a song called Diary. Okay. Oh yeah, and it's it's, it's a story about a guy who's in love with this girl, and he finds her diary under a tree, and he starts reading her diary, violating her privacy. But he's reading the diary, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, she's in love with me too." So he starts imagining their life together. They're going to have children. They're going to live this wonderful life together. Two yeah. people in love, and he's so excited. He keeps reading, and he gets to the end, and he realizes this is all about somebody else. And what? then the song ends. That's very sad. Why would he think it was about him? I missed that part. Because he was in love with her, so he's he just yeah. assumed he's just seeing himself in the things she's writing. It's so good. See, that's how, that's when you, you when you don't have confidence, it helps you. Because I would never think that. But maybe. then, but then at the end, he it's this very mature, mature realization at the end where he says, "All the things I wish for the two of us." I now wish for you and him. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> that would never happen. <laughs> it's great, though. Bread, there's one. I want to make it with you, I think, oh, is another yeah, one. Yeah. There's uh, the, the big one is, um, oh, man. Everything I Own. Everything I Own. That's a big That's one. A Guitar good one. Man's Guitar fantastic. Man is really great. Bread's awesome. Bread is great. Just get the Bread Anthology. Didn't Nate say his mom was a big Bread fan? I wonder. My mom's a huge Bread fan, too, so I wonder if it's oh. It's here's one. Jim Croce uh, has a great one. Time in a bottle. And I always like this line. He oh, says, uh, I remember you showing me this. Yeah. Line. He said, if I had a box just for wishes and dreams that had never come true, the box would be empty except for the memory of how they were answered by you. That's, that's and I'm good. like that. I mean, Jim Croce died in a plane crash and it's a real sad because we all lost a lot. I mean, that guy was going to be full of a lot of great songs. Oh, yeah. We had a lot more lines like that. Yeah. That's a real bummer. I mean, that verse three is killer. I mean, Jim Croce crushes it. You turned me on to a song by Jason Isbell, If We Were Vampires. Yes. That's a great song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a v- I know it, but I, can't, I don't know what that song sounds like. I like, like the more sad romance. That's a very yeah. sad one, but also has a nice – he also comes to a nice realization at the end. I like uh, He Stopped Loving Her Today by George Jones. That's a really good one. That's another. Is that a sad? That's a sad song. Sure sounds like it, right? Yeah, it's about a guy who loved, he said, he told a woman, she broke up with him. He said, I'll love you till I die. And then the the song is like, he has died now. And so his friends are like, he stopped loving her today. You've never heard it? No. I mean, I know of it. I've never analyzed the lyrics. Some people think it's the greatest country song of all time. Oh, okay. It's really good. Oh, well, they haven't heard a Tennessee fan by Morgan Wallen, then I guess. <laughs> um, have you ever listened to the Sullivan Ballou letter or read that? I don't know what that is. Sullivan Ballou letter. It's a letter during the Civil War written by a major in the Rhode Island infantry. And he wrote this letter to his wife. And it's like the most beautifully written love letter of all time. I have it memorized. I listen to it wow. sometimes. Wow. Um, yeah. And I'll just, I'll give you the, a few banger lines from it. Okay. He says, Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence can break. And yet my love of country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me irresistibly with all those chains to the battlefield. The memory of all the blissful moments I have enjoyed with you come crowding over me. And I feel most deeply grateful to God and you that I've enjoyed them for so long. And how hard it is for me to give them up and burn to ashes the hopes of future years when, God willing, we might still have lived and loved together. 
and see our boys growing up to honorable manhood around us. That's deep. I mean, I got lost in it and I, yeah. I kind of lost <laughs> what you says, were saying. Sarah, but- when I when my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, it will whisper your name. It's wow. like the most like intense, beautifully written love letter, and he dies a week later. Oh no. Mm. Never even gets it to her. They find it in his coat. Because he was like, oh, I think I'm going to die soon. Like, the war, yeah. <laughs> the war is getting pretty intense. So he writes this thinking, I'll get it to her when I get a chance. And he dies. Wow. Right away. So she she turned that, that letters into a museum now. It's, uh, it's And when did you memorize it? Well, it was, it's in Ken Burns' Civil War documentary. Okay. And they play it over, I think it's pronounced Ashokan Farewell. It's this violin tune. And it's on the soundtrack album. And so I just listen to it every to the now Ken and Burns. then. To Ken Burns' Civil War documentary. Do you ever recite it to Lucy? Um, she is not into it. No, no. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't see Lucy as a big poetry fan. <laughs> From Civil War era. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucy, do not mourn me dead. <laughs> I think I am gone. And She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, ugh. I think I was like, I showed it to her once in the car, and she was like, turn this off right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we talked about on the uh, psychology episode, which is before you were with us, Dusty, that there's a psychologist that came up with 36 questions that if you put a man and a woman in a room together, have them each ask each other these questions, and then the last four minutes just stare into each other's eyes, they'll fall in love. And apparently he did this with you know, two people, and they got married six months later. So, and I have the questions here. If you want to look at Aaron, <laughs> Nate wouldn't do this, but if you're- That would be wild, huh? Uh-huh. If I ask him these questions and then something happens, I'm not going to read him the questions. Yeah, you're yeah. afraid, aren't you? Is it a lot of different It'd questions? Different What's podcast, thir- it's 36. Oh, th- yeah. I mean, dang, you practically get to know each other. Well, well there you go. That might be the, a big part of it. Yeah. That's the point. Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? A dinner guest? See, you know, I think we read that one the last time, and Nate said, you got to say Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think anybody, I think a big flaw in this question mm-hmm. is that anybody not from at most 30 years ago, anybody from more than 30 years ago, it's going to be impossible to have a conversation. At You can't bring anybody pre-electricity. They're going to sit at this table and just, whoa, golly. Look at her <laughs> yeah. They're not going to be able to handle any of it, right? Yeah. And it's got to be, <laughs> it has to be somebody that speaks your language. So we're limited to just English speakers. So it's like. I'm even, going. I'm going. Ronnie Van Zant, the old lead singer from Leonard Skinner. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he could probably pick up right away. You, yeah. You you could get on with him. Yeah. Real quick, I'm sure. But it can't be somebody. It can't be like, you know, Caesar or somebody. You can't have dinner with him. But even like uh, that Jeffrey Chaucer poem that mm-hmm. I didn't read it to you. I'm like, if I lived in the Middle Ages and they spoke English, could I even communicate with them? It's so different. I think I may have a better chance with, with someone who speaks Spanish now. <laughs> then I would someone who spoke English in the 1300s. Oh yeah, Canterbury Tales, that whole area. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot different. Yeah, they're tough to rec. It's tough to understand what they're saying. If you watch Shakespeare plays in the original pronunciation, it's you, you need a translator there, even though it's technically English. So Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, obviously is one of the most famous, maybe the most famous love story. Mm-hmm. Would you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Cleopatra. <laughs> There's some. Um, there's, it's like just don't marry a. You got a rival families going on. Find someone else. You know what I mean. Well, that's the there. It's telling me love has obstacles. That's what it's about. You know? Yeah. In spite deadly of deadly obstacles. Yeah. But Julius Caesar, uh, sorry, uh, Shakespeare wrote about <laughs> real people to the point where Caesar might have to. I don't th- know. <laughs> there are. Uh, the historical facts that I get mixed up, like Julius Caesar, because Shakespeare wrote about him. I don't mm-hmm. know if all that stuff happened, um, where he said etu when they all stabbed him. And, uh, yeah. And then Cleopatra, because I was looking up famous love stories. She and, was it Mark Antony? Anthony? I don't know. Okay, well, anyway. That was one of the famous <laughs> love stories. Is he a stories. singer? All right. Mark Antony? You know, yeah, maybe he is. is he married to J-Lo? <laughs> Am I thinking of the? Am I crazy? Or I think that's, that's the, the same, same name. Okay, yeah. but, all right, but well, different guy. Probably a different. Yeah, 
Is, am I got the name right? Yeah. All right. Mark All right. Anyway. Oh, Mark Anthony, Anthony. not Anthony. Is it? Why don't you it's about the same? Could you really. Google it? And yeah. Instead, ask Tristan. Well, <laughs> it's it's well, it was a fun conversation. Yeah. Well, you know, I always just find I'm coming Nate over here. Mark Anthony. Yeah. Was a Roman politician in general who played a critical role in the transformation of the blah, 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 blah. yeah he's from okay well, Caesar anyway, times in shake I'm sorry Dusty but no, that's in, okay. in Shakespeare time Mark Sha- Anthony is the same <laughs> all right <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> well the story about Mark Anthony and J Lo is another classic, yeah it's another classic timeless love story. love story they're divorced now but yeah uh, in the Shakespeare I guess play about Cleopatra. He dies or commits suicide, and then she lets a poisonous asp uh, bite her and kill her. A wasp? Uh, no, asp, a, a like snake. A snake. Oh. ASP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost just said snake, but I'm like, no, I'll stick with it. I was like, did he, Brian just call it a wasp? Is that what you <laughs> <laughs> Brian's having a He's really taking the mispronunciation to extremes. <laughs> But so I always thought that was really how she died. But uh-huh. then I looked it up, and uh, that's just from the William Shakespeare okay. play. You know, this like this is what I learned though about dating and about love and stuff like that. It's like you know, they people always want to play games, right? There's always these like uh, there are always these rules about you know if you get a girl's number, you don't want to text for a couple of days because you don't want her to think you're desperate. And mm-hmm. it's like, I mean, really, it's all about just. Um, having some confidence and like having some accomplishment in life. Totally. Right. So that you have something that you, uh, you know, it's like people always make fun of women about wanting to marry rich men, but it's like, why would you not want to marry a guy with money so that you're taken care of and you're secure? So like giving, you have your own confidence. So that gives confidence to the woman right. that they should be with you. Yeah. And then just be honest and don't play games and it's like, I used to like, I grew up with a lot of women, right? I grew up with my mom and my sisters and I grew up watching all these romantic movies. I mean, Grease was a movie that I watched a lot as a kid. I had the soundtrack. I knew all the songs, still know all the songs. And What's your favorite? Uh, well, Summer Lovin' is is the best, but um, I also- I love Hopelessly Devoted. I, I, like, I like the uh, song Ugh. where he goes, Stranded at the drive-in, yeah. branded a fool. That's a good one too. Okay. Uh but um, oh, I hope to see it in a Super Bowl commercial yeah. next year. <laughs> but it's like all that stuff. It's like it's just so phony. This whole thing of like you just fall in love, and then everything is just love, love, love. And I think that's why people get divorced all the time now because it's actually it's a lot more practical. Than yeah, because right? the moment <laughs> you're not like feeling in love, you're like, well, I should get divorced because I love the guy I just met at the office, mm-hmm. right? Where it's like you know, it's a it's a real partnership that you share in. That totally. lasts for a long time. And the feelings may, you know, and I've not been married a long time, but this is just what I've gathered, yeah. right? You know, and feelings, you know, come and go, but it's like you, you've you agreed to enter into a partnership with each other yep. despite mm-hmm. feelings. And we've agreed to enter into a partnership with HelloFresh. <laughs> <laughs> a great transition, but really kills what I said. I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally agree with everything you said. I'm trying to... <laughs> Are you looking for an easy way to eat right and save money this year? Of course, we all are. Cut back on expensive takeout and delivery and get started with HelloFresh. You will love how fast, easy, and affordable it is to make a restaurant-quality meal in your own kitchen. Let me tell you, I can do a lot of things. Cooking is not one of them. I need the help of something like HelloFresh. They have 40 weekly recipes to choose from, so you can say bye-bye to your recipe rut and treat yourself and your family to exciting new flavors Every week. We love HelloFresh. It cuts out all the stress. No one in a marriage can decide what to eat for dinner. I mean, look, we've been talking about relationships this whole episode. Yep. We need to eliminate some of those stressors, some of those triggers uh, from your relationship. And this is one of them. 30 minutes or less, put great food on the table. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NateLand65. Listen. This is a, a more complicated promo code than, than our other sponsors, so I need you to listen closely. HelloFresh.com slash NateLand65 and use code NateLand65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's how you remember the 65 because ah. it's 65% off. Oh, yeah. So it's NateLand65. That's 65% off plus free shipping at HelloFresh.com slash, say it with me, Nate, Nate Land, Land 6'5". 6 Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. 
And if you want a healthy relationship, you're going to need to be healthy yourself. So Whoa, eat uh, good food. Uh, that's good bad point. news. Good point. That's, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad news for me, but Do you guys have moving. a romantic comedy or just a movie in general, romantic movie that was your go-to? <clears throat> There's a movie that I'll probably never watch again, but I watched it during a sappier time in my life. And it's a John Cusack movie called Serendipity. Oh, yeah. And I, I really, really like that movie. I love that movie. Why will you never watch it again? I don't know. It seems like I'm at a different place where it's probably a little too sappy for me that I would not. I, there was a time where I like really believed in a lot of like signs and things like that. And I, I just, I don't know. I don't really believe the same way I used a to believe. Great cast on this movie. John Cusack, Kate Beckinsale, Molly Shannon, Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven is great. Eugene in Levy. Too. I mean, wow. I love that movie because they write. Is it a phone number on the dollar? There's or some information on a dollar bill, or I can't remember which denomination it is, but is a currency of money. And then they find it later. Am I remembering? Yeah, this something like that on the plane. And yeah. that was signed. And I was when I was a kid, I was really big into putting my initials on a dollar bill, putting it out in the world, and just seeing if it would ever come back to yeah, me. Yeah, like I did with balloons. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But it's like, you know. I the, grew up with the internet. I didn't have to do oh, any yeah. of this stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> the thing about it is, that, like, he was about to get married, and then I guess he finds the dollar or something, and it just makes him think. Because they, they, they said something to each other like, you know, I'll write my number on this dollar bill, and if it ever makes its way back to you, then it's meant to be. And he's, mm-hmm. like, about to get married, and then he finds the money. So, now he goes on this quest to find this girl Wow. And, and it's Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But I'm like, now I'm like, I, I live in a more realistic place in my mind now. And I just don't know that <laughs> I couldn't I would. get on board with this premise. Anymore. I just think you that it more might. You realistic ro- romantic Like, movies. yeah, you already yeah. put the down payment on this wedding. Yeah. You know, you can't just back Yeah, out. I'm not even that against arranged marriages nowadays. <laughs> it was, they, they stayed together more, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, well. If, you, if your parents care about you. And they're like, I want my son to be with the, a woman that's going to, you know, meet his needs. And then, like, the woman's family is like, I want my daughter to be with a uh, a man that we know and we care about. The f- I don't know. I just think if the fa- parents care about you, it could be really great. I had many years of my life where I was single, and I'm like, if we only had arranged marriages, <laughs> that girl would be forced to <laughs> be married to me. But I think in movies, they always portray it that way, right? It's always yeah. this woman has to marry this hideous guy, and so it's, we're all against it. That's not the way he was describing <laughs> yeah. it. Just yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dusty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not all like that. They're not all hideous like Brian. Some of them are nice guys. <laughs> Aaron, you got a movie? Oh, man. God, there's so many. I'm a sucker for The Notebook, dude. I think The Notebook's a good Ooh. movie. If you kind of get over all the annoying parts about it, it's a it's a great movie. I've never seen it. You want to talk about chemistry that leaps off the screen. Let's talk <laughs> about Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling. I mean, my goodness. They yeah. are they are fire in a bottle. Is that oh, a I saying? Got, oh, I got, it's a good movie. I got another, too. What, what? do you got? Uh, I liked uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Seen that? No. Hugh Grant. What, what are you? <laughs> so, like. <laughs> There's a wrong answer, apparently. No, no. I'm no. Just, we just not seen it, and we said no at the same time. Well, it just he happened. said it very with disdain, oh, yeah. like, that's a terrible answer. Uh, well, no, it's just, it's just a funeral. It was funny. I like a little sadness in there, too. Uh-huh. Some British comedies. Well, you know what's interesting about the one that I was about to say is it is about a boy with Hugh Grant. Well, uh, I love that movie. That is, a, that is an incredible movie. That is a great movie. It holds up. I still watch it from time to time. It holds up. It's got. It's a great like love story, but also has got more heart to it with like the kid and oh, yeah. like, a, 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 you know, growing up with a single mom and having mm-hmm. a tough life. And it's like, it's really great. You seen it? No. About a boy is really About great. a boy. Yeah. I like that one better than Four Weddings and a Funeral. Yeah. I just didn't think of it as a romantic movie. Well, it is though, because, you know, he's, you know, he's just kind of like a player almost, yeah. but then he, you know, he, he, falls, he falls in love and gets his own heart broken. And uh, yep. uh, it's so good. British comedy. How about A Beautiful Mind? Never seen it, but I know what it is. I guess. Yeah, beautiful mind. Yeah, that's a good love story, right? I wouldn't think of it like that, but I guess so. I mean, Jennifer Connelly sticks with him yeah. through schizophrenia <laughs> for decades. That's true. Which, disappointingly, is not what happened in real life. They got divorced. Uh, yeah, the love did not last. Mm. Mm, she also stuck with Edward Norton when he was the Hulk. So, well. <laughs> 
Yeah, there's some other Kudos movies she's been Connelly. in that are pretty wild too. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. oh, but yeah. uh, she, yeah. um, uh, you know, uh, it, it good for her though. The good for the character in real life to yeah. to leave this guy. Oh, why? Because uh, th- she's probably much happier. Oh. Well, well, he ends up winning the Nobel Prize. Does that mean nothing to you? Uh, it doesn't mean a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> they were married. They were they, married, right? They were married. And you think it's good that she left? She him. was a student of his. Yeah. When he was teaching math, and I don't know what kind of math. I he, didn't know they were married, but did they have kids? They had. They had kids. Yeah, yeah. But you said on your podcast recently, know. I had a beef with, beef with you on this. Okay. If you've got kids, stick stick it out, which I totally agree with. Yeah. But you said if you don't have kids. Hey, leave them. Go ahead. Get well, out of there. Well, I just think that, you know, it's like, th- this is just from a point of view of like, you know, for the kids, right? If you're like married and you have kids and you're like, uh, you know, you're like mad at your spouse or whatever, and you're just unhappy, generally unhappy, and you want to get divorced, it's like, you're going to make your kids unhappy. You're going to kind of mess up your kids. And this is just my thoughts. I mean, you do whatever you want. But, and I just, but I just think if you're, you don't have kids, well, it doesn't matter. Mm. I don't think it. I don't think it matters if you get. So you don't divorced. think, you, like biblically, when Jesus nah. said it's a sin to divorce, not if you don't have kids. All right. Well, that's not what he said. I just don't. I just. But I think in that time, people were getting married and having kids. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sits and Laban. I don't know what that is, but what's that? It's a. It's a term. I don't know. I don't, and I'm not even speaking <laughs> biblically here, though. I'm just, m- mine is more just a practical kind of thing where it's like in, in our day and age where divorce is so common, uh, you know, if you're if you're married and you got no kids and you're already wanting to get out of it, you might as well just do it. But if you got kids, think about their lives. So you don't think the wedding vows before God? Well, I that. think a lot of people, who knows what they're even doing? Who even knows what their wedding vows are? They're probably hung over getting married. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? The guy probably had a stripper at his bachelor. Well, it party. used to be. It used to be. Wasn't it historically the bachelor party was the night before the yeah. wedding? And that's kind of gone away. That's gone yes. away People almost are smarter completely. About that. Yeah, I've, I haven't even heard of that in real life. Doing yeah. it the night before the wedding. Right now, it's I don't. I did mine like five months at, ahead <laughs> of time. Just just scheduling. It's it's tough. a week at the minimal minimum a week ahead of time. I mean, uh-huh. I've been to bachelor parties where I'm like, geez, like you're getting married and this is what you're doing. And then <laughs> also bachelorette parties. I'll see them bouncing around Nashville and I'm like, they're like, and the 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 the, the just the attire they have. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh man, yeah. this mm-hmm. is it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. So I looked up some country songs. Not country, most of these are country, but just songs on revenge. Seems like most of them are country. Uh, Before He Cheats, Carrie Underwood. Mm-hmm. That's a, you know, seems a little extreme. She takes a, a bat to his car, I she believe. She vandalizes a lot of property. I love the song, though. I do think it's a really fun song. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not a yeah. fun song, but. She's insane in the song, but yeah. yes. Uh, Toby Keith, How Do You Like Me Now? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, I've tried to do song breakdowns on that as a joke, uh-huh. but it's like this How guy, like me now? this guy, a good song. It, it, it's such a good song. And when I was in high school, I really liked it. But as I got older, I started to realize like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This guy's doing everything he can. He said, I only wanted to get your attention, but you overlooked me somehow. So he goes to the extreme. He breaks into the football stadium, writes her number on the 50 yard line, says, call for a good time. Mm-hmm. It's like. How about just ask her on a date? Yeah. Where was that at? Yeah, you have that's a great joke. I love that joke. Yeah, I mean, it's like, and then the second verse gets really extreme. He's like, uh, uh, you married into money, and then he said, you, you know, your 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 husband's always gone, and your kids hear you cry down the hall. The alarm <laughs> clock starts ringing. Who could that be singing? It's me, baby, with your wake up call. How do you like me now? And it's like. <laughs> Wow, so you know she's struggling, and you're just attacking her. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe she's about to get a divorce, and this is finally your time to have some love with her, you Uh know? No, he's still vindictive. Yeah, Yeah. it's like, dude, she never, like, based on the song lyrics, she never did anything to him. Mm -hmm. And he's got this just vendetta against her. Now, I rarely show Dusty a song that he gets into, but I showed him one a couple years ago called I Hope by Gabby Barrett. And in the song... 
Incredible song, by the way. She's singing to a guy. She says, I hope you meet the girl of your dreams. I hope you go out. I hope there's sparks like you've never had before. I hope when you lean in and have a first kiss, I hope you feel something incredible. And and before before he reels it, I mean, that first verse is feels like a love song. Yeah. Yeah. And it is unbelievable. And Dusty's not on board with it because he's like, oh God, here it is. He said, I she says, I hope. You, you save up and I hope you spend all this money on an engagement ring and I hope she says yes and I hope there's butterflies and then I hope she cheats on you. Like you did like on you me. Like you did on me. Oh. And then the second verse oh. is, I hope you make up. I hope you get back together. I hope you do all and Then I hope she cheats like you did. I it's mean, such a hard song. Dusty was I mean, like fired up yeah, listening to yeah, it. It's a good, good one. I recommend it. Gabby Barrett, I hope. Check it's it out. a hard song. I mean, and 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 yeah. I mean, I, I don't like a lot of these love songs now because they're not realistic. Uh, our friend Joe Kelly used to have a uh, joke about Bob Marley, and he sa- has a song where he says, apparently Bob Marley has like I don't know, just lots and lots of kids by several different women, mm-hmm. and he has the song, "Is it love? Is it love? Is it love that I'm feeling?" He's like, "Probably not, Bob." <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great uh, a couple more here she can't say that anymore by john Connolly. Uh, this is the one dusty has theories about yeah right? well i threw out a theory and you asked him about it right yeah you said in the song that you think the killed woman her. kill or he kills the woman yeah. in the song and uh uh, and it's a great song, a yes. really great song. And I asked John Conley about it at the Opry one night, and he laughed, <laughs> and one of his bandmates laughed, and they said, <laughs> I, they said, we've never thought about that. Uh, b- because I imagine these guys get asked all kind of questions about right. their songs. And he said, I've never thought about it. No one's ever asked that. But he says, I don't I don't think he wrote the song, uh-huh. but he's, ble- he's like, I don't believe there was any killing in the song. I'm not sure what's going on there. But I that's a good song too. Oh, that's a great song. And then one other, I I did not know this. So you guys like because like, she cheats, right? And then it's, she she says in the song, like, I've never done anything like this. And then they're like, She can't say that anymore. And it's just like it's so good where it's like, uh-huh. I don't know. It's it's I can't sing, but it's great. Yeah, it's a great song. Uh, do you guys know the song The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia? Big fan. You know that song? No. Reba McIntyre? No. That's a night that the lights went out in Georgia. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always attribute that song to Reba McIntyre, but it was actually a number one hit first by Vicki Lawrence. Yeah, I knew it was a cover. I didn't know it was a number one hit. But do you know Vicki Lawrence? No. I don't know Vicki Lawrence. That's Mama from Mama's House. Oh, wow. I do know. I remember Mama's House. She's a comedic actress, and she recorded this. Her husband wrote the song. And uh, Bobby Russell, Bobby Russell, and she recorded it and became a number one hit, her only song. Well, that's awesome. Well, I know that you normally face the clock, and I'm facing it now, and I feel like we're at a uh, we've hit, we've hit, I don't know where we end. I don't know. You always, Dusty, call it, I run the show, so but, just but now you're down. no longer facing the clock. Brian's <laughs> milking it because it'll be a while. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a while till we do another episode <sighs> where Brian's in that seat. You've had your picture of your family up there. I mean, <sighs> the whole episode. <laughs> I just kissed myself. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, where are we at this week? Well, this week I'm going to be at the Ryman with Kathleen Madigan. Oh, I'll be nice. uh, opening for her at the Ryman on Saturday. It's going to be really great. And then next week I'll be at the Helium in Indianapolis. Hmm. We should say uh, also you're opening for Kathleen. She's got a special coming out. Uh, I think February 24th or 21st. 21st, I okay. Think. 21st. Yeah. Uh, well, she's great. And if you if you want to come see me but don't know who Kathleen is for some reason, she's great. And yeah, you'll oh love yeah, it. she's great. Yeah, you'll yeah, love it. One of, uh, I think, an all time great. And it's yeah. on Amazon Prime, just like Nate's is. So if, if you got Amazon to watch Nate's special, you can hop on there and watch Kathleen's. How about that? Um, this weekend, I'm in Charlottesville, Virginia, February 17th. It's one show. It's at, or I think it's two shows, but one <laughs> night at the Boar's Head Resort Ooh, in Charlottesville. Right. No jokes about Boar's Head, Virginia. Boar's no Head. deli meat jokes. Oh, that's half my act. So if you want to see <laughs> me reach, come to the Boar's Head Resort. And then I'm in Asheville next weekend. And I got a. I just now I'm doing. I'm going to California, doing some shows out there for the first time in All May. Right. Irvine, Ontario. Doing the improvs out there. Check Fun that clubs. Out. Awesome. Fun and clubs. Check AaronWeberComedy.com. Let's go ahead and check that out. 
Oh, I got a new website. My website got updated. It's dustyslay.com still, but it's uh it's been updated. I got some uh oh, some fresh look things at this. in there. You yeah. got some stuff going on. Yeah. How about it? Yeah, just got a new website. Good. So check it out. Yeah. It's a hot website. My uh a friend Andy Ford. Let's uh, chat. If I click here, I can me. talk to you. Yeah. Let's see if I, I mean, get a response. I'll get an email and I'll respond later. Oh, is that really how it, it works? It really does go to me, yeah. Oh, sorry about but that. But people go, this can't be really dusty. And then I'll, I'll respond like weeks later, and they never <laughs> respond. But uh, This weekend, I am at Helium Comedy Club in Indianapolis. Awesome. All right, we're doing back-to-back awesome. weekends That's right. Helium. That's right. All this right. Friday, this Saturday, I'm at Helium. And uh, the following weekend, I'm at Good Night's Comedy Club in Raleigh. All Boom. right. Uh, February 24th, Hitting 25th. the Helium circuit. That's right. And then um, – Weekend after that, March 3rd and 4th, I'm at uh, Blue Ridge Comedy Club in Bristol, Tennessee. Awesome. So three great weekends. Come out to those shows. Um, you had some overflow because of David Tell, I think, on your shows, right? Okay. That's what you well, said I mean, on the yeah, podcast. I mean, people bought tickets. That's what you said on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, it didn't hurt me that well, my point he sold is, out all the other shows. Yeah, yeah, you said that on the I have a Adele, I, I have Adele Given, so oh, she'll sell out for sure. So all those Adele Givens fans will come on over to my show. That's and what I'm trying to say. And you're gonna give the same type of energy Ab- that absolutely. Adele Givens yeah, would give. Absolutely. absolutely. And they'll be like, it's practically the same show. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So uh, Nate will be back next week. Don't worry. This is like we said. It's not yeah, a regular thing. This isn't a regular well, I thought thing. it's. I think it's been great. But yeah, we have not all been together in a while. So no. it mm-hmm. will be fun to be all back. And yeah. Nate's done a lot since he's been gone. So we he got has. a lot to talk about. His yeah. special's doing great. Mm-hmm. He's been out there playing golf with celebrities. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. And, my God. Yeah, okay. he is living it up. So uh, as always, we love you. None of this is forgotten on us. Uh, lost on us. Not, none of this is lost on us. I don't even know how you forget something on someone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.